Kicking off the countdown list, number 10 is her lip injections. Is it really a Kylie Jenner list if it doesn't talk about her lips? I mean, I feel like that would be a sin not to talk about her lips. For years now, her lips have always been the most talked about feature on her body. Believe it or not. Her fans first noticed that as she started to grow older, she seemed to have fuller lips. And for a while, she was telling her fans that it was just lip liner and a photo filter, making them look more full. Over time, she did finally come clean about getting lip injections, and it was revealed that she had them done when she was just a teenager. Turns out she had her first injections when she was just 16 years old. And she said that she kept it a secret because she didn't want people to look at her as a bad influence. Because obviously when you're 16, you have a lot of young fans, and you don't want to be putting needles in your face at 16 years old. Girl, too young. You know what I saw? That just means Kris Jenner had to sign off on that because you will need parental consent. Coming in next at number nine is the envy between Kylie and Kendall. When your entire family is famous and everyone has their own businesses running, one might think that there would be some kind of competition going on. I mean, some of their products and businesses are like a conflict of interest with each other. Like they're in competition. But because they are all sisters and they are all very successful, each sister has said that they do not feel threatened by anyone else. But there was some tea spilled and a source claimed that Kendall and Kylie have a secret rivalry that's never really talked about. The sisters seem to be incredibly close to us because of their small age gap and their many collaborations throughout the years. But a source told Radar Online, I quote, there's so much envy between these two, it's as though they're not happy when the other one is doing well. Some little sister competition going on. I mean, I get that. I feel like there might naturally just be a little bit of envy there. Cruising into number eight is her hair. Just by following her or seeing some of her pictures, you'd be able to tell that her hair is fake. She switches up her look often, usually sporting bright colored wigs or changing up the length and color of her real hair with hair extensions. But her appearance is important for her brand for many reasons. You probably never stop to think about why she keeps changing her hair. And I don't blame you because there are like a million other more important things to think about. But it turns out that she makes these changes on purpose. She said that changing her hair makes her feel like a new person. And many of us females can totally relate to that. Despite her brand having to do with some of it, there seems to be more personal reasoning behind it too. I mean, I can't say I've never dyed my hair wanting to feel like a different person. Like, you know, post breakup, I gotta get new hair, I'm a new me. And spot number seven is her weird collection. Having a collection is not uncommon. Even having weird collections isn't uncommon. People collect things all the time and it kind of just depends on what you think is weird or not. I personally collect stuffed animals and I'm serious. I call them my furry friends and I love them. And I would love if you guys would let me know in the comments if you have a weird collection. This is a judgment-free zone. Uh, yeah, let me know. But anyways, back to Kylie. Her collection is really random and it's easy to think that it probably has to do with fashion or beauty or skincare, but it turns out it is not even close to that. Turns out she has a collection of rubber ducks and has been collecting them for years. When she was younger, the one thing she always asked for on her birthday was a rubber duck. And she said she still has some of her very first ones. I wonder if she'll pass them along to Stormy because that would actually be really cute. Sliding into number six is the fact that she is shy. Now I know what you're thinking. The way she posts on social media, you wouldn't think that she is necessarily the shy type. She often posts pictures in barely anything clothing and in bikinis, showing off her skin and flaunting her curves. The reality is though, who she is on social media and who she is behind the scenes are two totally different people. She appears to have all the confidence in the world, but she's actually quite shy. She was speaking with People Magazine when she let it slip that she is a lot more shy than people think. And in really busy situations, she gets anxious and shy very easily. She plays it off well though, especially seeing as there's cameras surrounding her every single day. She seems like a natural. So she is hiding that well. I did not picture her as like the shy type. We are halfway through and we have her secret on makeup. Forbes named her the youngest self-made billionaire after she started her own beauty company, Kylie Cosmetics. Her entire world revolves around makeup, quite literally, since it's basically her full-time income. Unlike her sister, Kendall, she doesn't do modeling and she isn't really in the fashion industry like her other Kardashian sisters. So it might surprise people to learn that even though she created a beauty empire around makeup, she doesn't actually like wearing makeup. She exposed her little secret and said that she only wears makeup because that's what her fans like to see on her social media. She says that she has a passion for makeup, but she doesn't personally like to wear it often and that there is a difference between the two. I get that. I like makeup. Like I'm intrigued by makeup. I like makeup. I don't like wearing it though. 
I like can't wait to take it off. Moving along to number four, Kylie is stubborn. Her biggest fans would love to think that they know everything about her. A big part of having celebrity status is that all your fans think they personally know you. It's kind of weird when you think about it. Like people obsess over someone that they've never actually met and know nothing about. But even if you thought you knew what she was like, one of her traits that she might not want you knowing about is that she is incredibly stubborn. Welcome to the club, sister. I know all about that. There are many different words that can be used to describe her and an insider dish that stubborn is one of them. They said, I quote, if you knew Kylie, she can be very stubborn. When she makes her decisions, she sticks by them. I mean, I feel like that's not necessarily a bad trait though. Or maybe I'm just saying that because I'm stubborn and I wanna think it's a good thing, but in some cases, being stubborn isn't really a bad thing. Taking over the third spot is she wants to live behind the scenes. If you look at her social media, you might get the impression that she loves all of the attention that she gets, but the truth is she doesn't. She doesn't like being recognized every time she goes out and she would rather live a more private life. During an interview with Wonderland Magazine, she said, I wanna be a businesswoman and behind the scenes. Kylie Jenner needs to retire. Girl, I hate to break it to you, but your career is just getting started. She still chooses to live her life in the public eye, but admits that she hates a lot of the attention she gets and the pressures that come along with it. Realistically though, even if she didn't want to live in the public eye anymore, it's kind of too late for that. Like she can never just go out and people aren't gonna freak out. In spot number two is her secret cousin. That's right, apparently Kylie has a cousin that has been behind the shadows this whole time. The craziest part is that she looks like a spitting image of Kylie. You may have already seen her on social media. Her name is Natalie Zatel and she She's the youngest cousin of the family and is a low key Instagram model. People recently caught on to this unknown little fact and no one is really sure why we are just finding this out. Natalie is the daughter of Kris Jenner's younger sister. People found out about her after a picture of her and Kylie started surfacing on the internet. When you see them together side by side without all the makeup and hair and wigs and all of that, you can tell that they're related and it's kind of cute. She's beautiful. Finally, we have made it to number one and we have her pregnancy was unexpected. All right, so the majority of us, this isn't really a secret. I feel like we all assumed this anyway, but it's totally not fair to judge someone that we don't even know on whether or not they planned on getting pregnant. Cause really, we don't know what happened behind the scenes. The world went to a frenzy when the rumors first started and Kylie completely went MIA and hid it from the entire world. When she first found out about her pregnancy, she wanted to keep that moment for herself rather than live it out in front of the world where she says that she would have been judged for it. Which she probably would have because she was so young. She admits that she did not plan on getting pregnant but that it was the most amazing experience nonetheless. I mean, I get it. If I was her age and had that platform and I unexpectedly got pregnant, the amount of anxiety I would have, I wouldn't even want to tell my own parents, let alone the entire world. Number 10, Kim and Drake. Drake is a famous Canadian rap artist and I've heard he's got a pretty stellar candy room in his mansion. Sounds pretty fun. Recently, Drake dropped a song called Search and Rescue, now available on Spotify. Halfway through the track, the music cuts out and a voice clip of Kim Kardashian and her mother Chris from an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians begins to play. The intention was to throw shade at Kanye West, whom Drake has had problems with in the past, but it only added fuel to the rumor fire surrounding his alleged affair with Kim during her marriage to Kanye. In the clip, Kim says, I don't come this far just to not be happy. Remember that. On top of this, many fans have brought up Drake's lyrics from his song In My Feelings, claiming that Kiki is actually Kim herself. Hardcore internet sleuths sifted through his lyrics and discovered that if you take the directions that he's rapping about in the song and start at Drake's house in LA, it actually takes you directly to Kim's front gate. Coincidence? I think not. Number nine, Kendall and Bad Bunny. Not long ago, Kendall Jenner was dating a basketball player from the Phoenix Suns named Devin Booker. Devin and Kendall were together for over two years, first getting together in 2020. However, in 2022, the couple had a quiet breakup that left fans wondering what really happened to end what seemed to be such a strong relationship. Well, it turns out there may have been another man, or a bunny, if you will. I'm just gonna show myself out, jeez. Bad Bunny is a popular rapper, singer, songwriter, and now actor. 
actor, after briefly starring in last year's action comedy Bullet Train as the wolf. In March of this year, Bunny seemingly dissed Kendall's ex, Booker, in his track, Coco Chanel. He rapped, The sun in Puerto Rico is hotter than in Phoenix. And a few weeks following the song's release, Kendall introduced Bunny to her horse, Arizona, in California. Oh, that's so cute. You named it Arizona. Nah. The couple are officially together. Hmm, let's see how long this one lasts. Number 8. Devin Booker and Kendall Jenner. Jenner and Booker were first spotted together on a double date with other people. At the time, Booker was dating Kylie's best friend, Jordan Woods, and Jenner was dating Ben Simmons. In February of 2019, it was revealed that Booker and Woods' relationship had fizzled out. But not long after the announcement, Woods was caught kissing Khloe Kardashian's boo, Tristan Thompson. Yeah, this is just gonna be very messy. Kardashian and Thompson split, and with that, Kylie's friendship with Woods was gone. But what that meant was that Kendall and Devin were free to do whatever they wanted. It was confirmed they were seeing each other after multiple sources caught them road tripping together over the summer of 2020. They were together for roughly two years before calling it quits in 2022, taking a break to figure out if their future together was actually meant to be. They got back together, but ultimately ended things on good terms in November of that same year. Number 7. Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet Timothy Chalamet is slowly building his acting repertoire in Hollywood, and so far it's going pretty well. He starred as the lead in Dune, and he was recently announced to be playing a young Willy Wonka in a TV series chronicling Wonka's rise to glory. It was also recently announced that he was seeing Kylie Jenner like every week. While the announcement of them being a couple is a little out of nowhere, the fact is that Kylie has been co-parenting her two kids with Travis Scott, and Travis did not appreciate the secrecy. He said that he felt blindsided by the announcement, but he respects her decision to move on romantically. This relationship isn't all that recent, however it was reported that the two may have shared a private moment or two during her marriage to Scott. Neither party have confirmed nor denied the rumors, but just seeing these two in a picture together makes us think that there is no way this relationship is that fresh, right? Number 6. Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson Pete Davidson was the youngest cast member on Saturday Night Live when he was high at the age of 20. He was the youngest cast member of all time. In 2021, Kim Kardashian hosted an episode of the show and starred in a sketch with Pete, parodying a whole new world from the Disney film Aladdin. The sketch was it was okay, but apparently sitting that close to each other all week really got him going. At the time, Kim was still involved with rapper Kanye West, who actually attended the live show, but apparently stormed out of the room following her scene with Pete. Apparently, Kanye had been present at rehearsals all week, and he remembers regularly seeing Pete and Kim smiling and laughing together while he was being ignored entirely. Kim and Kanye began their divorce process not long after that show, and simultaneously, Pete announced that him and Kim were official. They were only together for about a year, but it was enough time for Pete to get close to her family and even get a tattoo of her kid's name on his arm. Which sounds hardcore, but he has like a million tattoos, so it's probably jammed between like a skull and an MGK portrait. Who knows? Number 5. Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker Travis Barker is the drummer of the popular band Blink-182. Travis and Kourtney met after Barker had spent some time with the Kardashian crew at her mom Kris Jenner's house in California. Following the official news of their relationship, many fans were quick to comment on the short short time between her relationship with Barker and that of her ex-boo, Luca Sabat. According to Chris herself, Travis and Courtney began flirting while she was still seeing someone. Their connection was so strong from the beginning, but unfortunately that meant the end of one relationship, but the start of a new one too. Courtney appears to be very happy with the Blink-182 drummer, and Luca doesn't seem to have any issues with them being together, so I guess this is a cheating scandal with a happy ending for now. Number 4. Kim and Kanye Kim Kardashian and Kanye West started dating in 2012 and they were officially married two years later in 2014. During their marriage, life was rocky to say the least. While Kim was fairly tame for the most part, as we all know, Kanye was slowly having a mental breakdown. He was posting hate speech and racially fueled tweets and constantly sharing his political views as well as publicly backing Donald Trump. Is it really any surprise that Kim found comfort in another man's arms? While hosting Saturday Night Live in 2012, 2021, Kim met Pete Davidson, previously mentioned, while still married to Kanye. Kanye discovered that Kim and Pete began dating following the live show, and it seemed to be the final breaking point. Apparently only a few months before the show, Yee and Kim were constantly arguing about everything. And following the divorce, Kim revealed that she would constantly be trying to help Kanye understand why his views and his words were just so wrong. She wanted him to get better, but instead he doubled down and filed for a divorce. Kim is now happily single and received joint 
joint custody of her four kids, so it's a win-win for the Kardashian clan. And for Kanye, eh, well, eh. Number three, Tyga and Kylie Jenner. Michael Ray Stevenson, known professionally as Tyga, is an American rap artist with a long list of bops under his belt. In 2011, he was asked to perform at Kendall Jenner's Sweet 16, and her sister Kylie was smitten. The two would keep in contact over the years, but rumors of them being a couple were shot down constantly until 2012, when he broke off his relationship with fiance Black China, also a rap artist. It appeared that the split was due to the revelation that Kylie and Tyga were in fact an item. Tyga looked to Twitter to defend his actions, telling people not to believe the rumors. He's been friends with the family forever. They're all just friends. A year later though, they posted a photo on Halloween of themselves wearing a couple's costume, Chucky and the Bride of Chucky. A couple of years went by and the pair were constantly seen together on dates, posted several pictures together on Instagram, and Tyga even bought her a Ferrari on her 18th birthday. They eventually split and Kylie has moved on a couple of times with her next partner, Party Next Door, who is a person that is a terrible name. Even posting a photo on Instagram comparing his watches to Tyga's and claiming that the more diamonds the better. Alright boys, let's not stand around all day comparing watch sizes. Number 2. Kim Kardashian and Ray J. In this case, Kim was the staff that had the affair. You see, herself and the rap artist shared a three year relationship, but they met before Kim was famous while she was working as a stylist for his sister Brandy. At the time they met, Kim was still married to Damon Thomas, but apparently wasn't too happy with the relationship. She took part in an affair with Ray J and called it off with Thomas. During their time together, a certain tape was released online without Kim's permission, and the content contained explicit material of herself and Ray J doing and then nasty. She sued the company that released it for $5 million to retrieve the rights and own the film. Following the release of the tape, their relationship quickly crumbled, and it was later revealed that both parties were cheating the entire time. And despite them having the knowledge of that, they just, you know, they didn't care. They just kept doing it. Number one, Kris Jenner and Robert Kardashian. Mama Kris Jenner met Robert Kardashian at a horse race in California in 1973, and immediately sparks flew. At that time, Kris was in a committed relationship with Caesar Sonato, a pro golfer. He was often gone so long that there were gaps in their relationship and Robert filled that gap. Chris began an affair with Robert that lasted for quite some time until one day Caesar returned home early and walked in on the couple doing the no pants dance. Needless to say, Caesar broke it off with Chris right away, but Robert also broke things off with Chris, claiming that she wasn't mature enough for a serious relationship. Yeah, yeah no duh, dude. Robert was basically a mistress. He wasn't much more mature himself. He began dating Elvis Presley's daughter, but that relationship failed too, and Robert ended up returning to Chris's arms. They were married for a little over a decade when Chris proved that she had not matured at all. She took part in another affair, and this time it was with soccer player Todd Waterman. Robert hired private investigators after becoming suspicious of Chris, and he was proven right. So if there's anything to take away from this video, is if you think your partner is cheating, you're probably right. People are horrible now. Number 10. Grave shopping. Window shopping is not weird. We all love to mindlessly walk around a store that we know well and good we will be purchasing nothing from. But the Kardashian family doesn't go to Hot Topic. Or maybe they do. I live in Toronto, I've never seen them. Instead, this family likes to window shop for coffins and grave plots. During an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Momager Chris decided that the best gift she could get for her kids was a nice, comfortable place to keep their lifeless husks tucked away when they pass. Chris and the crew spent the day trying to decide what model of coffin they wanted to purchase, with Chris going so far as to getting into a coffin to see if it was cozy. Hey Chris, if you're trying to get cozy in a coffin, you're still alive! Bang on that lid, man! On top of shopping for physical coffins, she also took the kids on a tour of a graveyard that seemed to boast some pretty stellar plots. There is such a serious conversation over the choice of in the ground or in a mausoleum made of marble. Yeah, which one do you think they picked? Number 9. Mystery Meat Following a brief discussion on the practice of eating the uh, stuff that comes out after we're born. Yep, that's a thing apparently. Kim and Courtney decided to hatch a plot where they would trick their family into thinking they had just eaten placenta. There, I'm only saying it once. From now on, it'll be called the stuff. The sisters go through an elaborate preparation and brag to their family about the mystery meat that they had purchased. As the evening went on, they continued to plant the seeds right up until the forks were plunged deep into 
the meat. Following the meal, they decided that it was the perfect time to tell their family they just dined on the stuff. Of course, their immediate reaction is disgust and anger at the same time. Don't eat mystery meat, guys, especially if it's cooked by Kim Kardashian. <laughs> that could be a person for all you know. They let the prank play out for some time, with Caitlyn Jenner almost blowing her chunks all over the table. After a few moments of panic, they let it slip that the meat that they were eating had actually been brisket. But needless to say, Kim's no longer in charge of family dinner night. Number 8. The Pepsi Commercial Sponsored brand deals can mean a lot of money for the people involved. Just look at every cologne on the planet. They hire someone to stand on a beach for them for like 30 seconds and make a million dollars. Around 2017, Kendall Jenner decided to partner with the soda brand Pepsi to create a commercial that would act as both an ad and a PSA against hate. The commercial consisted of hundreds of people from different parts of the world drinking Pepsi. And eventually everyone comes together on the streets on what appeared to be New York, I'm not sure. Kendall looks to the crowd, wipes off her makeup, and follows suit. And the cringe comes when the crowd of people appear to be at a standoff with the police. Kendall walks through the crowd and hands an officer a can of Pepsi. He sips it, and the crowd cheers before they swarm the cops who are suddenly just cool with everything that's going on. The ad was meant to be a political statement following the passing of several African American men and women in the United States, aiming to bring people together, which it did, but for the wrong reasons. The world collectively cringed at this absolute mess, forcing Kendall to drop an apology video on that season's premiere of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. She may have apologized, but we will still never forget this strange brand collaboration. Number 7. The Birthday Suit Shoot Momager Kris Jenner has been a big part of the family unit for a long time. In fact, she's one of the main reasons that her kids are such good liars. The older we get, the more we clamor for our glory days. With Kris, she, want, she decided she wanted to recapture that youthful image in a birthday suit swim shoot at her home. During the episode titled Let It Go, the Kardashian kids enter their backyard only to discover that their mother is taking rather spicy photos in a see-through swimsuit. Not something that anyone wants to see their mom doing. Chris was quick to tell the girls there was nothing wrong with the shoot and that she was simply trying to show off her curves, but her clan wanted none of it and instead let their mother know exactly how they felt. The mom mother just continues to take photos despite her kids now being present at the home. And at one point, Kim literally tells her mom that she's scarring them for life. The moment was more awkward than anything else, but certainly shows just how little regard Chris actually has for her kids. Kids. Number 6. Selfie! If you're a Kardashian, any moment is a good photo op. Whether it's on a luxurious boat in the Caribbean, or in an SUV on the way to jail. Anytime is selfie time. During an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, the crew were on their way to drop Chloe off at prison after she violated her probation. Things in the car were intense, but Kim decided to defuse the tension by snapping a couple of candid pics of herself and her sisters. The entire ride was filled with cringy moments, including Chris suggesting that they all go get some pre-jail eye hopping and chill out. The funniest thing about the moment is that Chloe seems pretty calm and collected considering she's going to jail, while her mother is just furious from start to finish. Needless to say, if your sibling is being arrested, don't take family photos on the way to the prison. Number 5. Shut your mouth. When Scott Disick was still with Kourtney Kardashian, he was a regular wild man on the show. He would regularly get into situations that made him look like the absolute worst, which he was. During one particularly rough moment on the show, Scott was accompanied by the rest of the crew to Las Vegas, Nevada for some wholesome family family fun. No, I'm just kidding, they drank no-no juice a lot. At one point, Scott becomes so intoxicated that he loses control of his emotions and berates a waiter for simply doing his job. He then proceeds to give him a tip by jamming $100 in his mouth. The waiter pushed back and walks away, which is probably a good move. If Scott Disick shoved 100 bucks in my mouth, well, I'd... Nah, I'm poor. I'd probably take it and spend it on my hydro bill. Scott is one of the messiest members of the family, despite not being a bloodborne Kardashian, but thankfully, Courtney eventually came to her senses and dumped him like yesterday today's lunch. Number 4. Kylie's Billions Kylie Jenner made the cover of Forbes magazine in 2019 as the youngest self-made billionaire ever following the successful partnership between her cosmetic brand and Ulta, which was like a beauty salon company. It turned out that that wasn't actually the case though. Jenner allegedly sold half of her cosmetics company, Kylie Cosmetics, to the beauty giant Cody in a deal worth $1.2 billion. Now this was huge and considered to be one of the greatest celebrity cash outs of all time. But the first rule of being a famous person is, if you can help but maybe try not to lie, especially to Forbes magazine who did some digging and revealed that Jenner was actually inflating the size and profit margins of her business. It turns out that the cosmetic brand was actually much smaller than originally thought and it was uncovered that Jenner only actually made about $314 million after taxes from the company. The revelation was briefly covered on an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians but it was ultimately edited to make the situation look less severe than it actually was. The reality was Kylie was lying about her money, tricking people who wanted to invest and let's not even 
start with where her cosmetics come from. It's understaffed factories with non-protective gear. Good luck, Kylie. Number three, 2020. Pfft, who cares? In 2020, while most of the world was shut down and we were all forced to stay in our houses, the rich and powerful were living it up. Especially the Kardashian family. Despite the entire world throwing a close sign over their doors, Kim and her sisters decided they cared more about seeing their buddies than saving the world. Kim rented a private island for her 40th birthday, an entire island for about 30 people. Yep, that makes sense. Kim decided to post photos and videos from the event, which were of course met with immediate backlash. Kim was quick to defend herself by claiming that every person there had stayed inside and away from people for at least two weeks. They all tested negative, blah blah blah. In her post, she claimed that the event was to help herself and her friends feel normal during a particularly hard time in history. Hey man, I would have liked to do that too, but I don't have any K's in my name. Not only did Kim throw a lavish private party, but her sister Kendall did the exact same thing, only much, much worse. Kendall decided it would be an awesome idea to throw a private rooftop Halloween party in Hollywood, California, and invited not 30, but 100 of her closest friends. Again, the crew claimed that everyone attending the event was tested and good to go, but the reality was nobody knows what went down or where they came from. Most of them probably showed up in a helicopter or something. Freaking famous jerks. Number two, cut the cucumber. All right, anybody who's ever made a meal has probably chopped a vegetable once or twice. For me, it was only once, never again. For Kendall Jenner, it seems like the answer is she's never done it. During an episode of the latest version of the reality show, The Kardashians, Kendall was shot attempting to cut a cucumber, and I do mean attempting. Like in the footage, she moves her hands around in a weird way that makes her like chop the cucumber backwards. I don't know. This woman has clearly never taken a single cooking class in her life. And I'd like to thank my high school cooking teacher, Mr. Kenzel, for being so good at his job and preventing me from looking like this. Seriously, she was holding the already cut side of the cucumber trying to grip it. Like, just, just watch one YouTube tutorial. The moment went viral online and she received massive amounts of online hate, with many asking the question why she was trying to make herself a snack. Like, we all know that these people have a literal closet full of chefs waiting to be activated and put into cook mode. Next time, Kendall should just go on Amazon and buy the automatic cucumber slicer for three easy payments of $99.99. And at number one, girls don't work these days. In March 2022, the Kardashian clan were doing a profile for the outlet Variety. When the question was asked, what advice do you have for women aiming to be entrepreneurs? Kim decided to declare that women simply needed to get off their bum bums and work. Nobody wants to work these days. The tone deaf statement was met with massive amounts of backlash. Considering Kim comes from a long line of wealthy people, it's no surprise that she would receive such public hate. If I was born rich, I'd probably be telling people to work harder too, but like, Kim gets paid to basically look good and be on TV. That's it. Oh yeah, definitely hard work being done there. Oh, so exhausting. Number 10, worst of the bunch. Of all the members of the clan, Kendall Jenner has been consistently brought up as simultaneously the most relatable and the meanest. She may take up the most points on this list all by her lonesome. As the first and probably most minor complaint against her, a TikTok video where a fan recalled meeting Kim Kardashian in New York City also happened to throw shade at Kendall at the same time. In the video, the TikToker praised Kim for being quote, the most polite celebrity I've ever met. Talking about the celebrities that she has met, the TikToker said quote, including Kendall, who I can't say the same about. It was interesting how when the conversation was about Kendall specifically, the TikToker made note that quote, Kendall could learn a thing or two. The post made its way to Reddit where other fans joined in on the conversation and their opinions on Kendall. One user wrote, Kendall has always just given me that reserved, wiry, shy but rude kind of vibe on the show. I wasn't sure if that was her in character. There was also one commenter that claimed to not know a single Keeping Up With The Kardashians fan who had a positive experience when meeting Kendall Jenner in real life. And here's an example of that very thing. Huh. Number 9, no tip for you. Back in 2014, a waitress accused Kendall Jenner of skipping out on a $60 bill and not leaving a tip. But wait, when the waitress allegedly chased after Kendall Jenner to get the money, Kendall turned around and threw cash in the woman's face and then laughed. It doesn't even sound like real life. The waitress then took to Twitter saying, quote, that horrible moment when you chase a Kardashian down the street because she forgot to pay her bill to be thrown money in your face. Kendall did respond to the rumors, but by calling them ridiculous. And she then had her lawyer whip up a cease and desist letter to the server. Nothing kind of says guilt like an instant cease and desist letter. I wouldn't know, I'm just thinking that's what it's like. Three years later though, Kendall was also not a good customer at a bar in Brooklyn when a server posted a since deleted picture of a bill for just $24 that Kendall had signed but left the tip field blank. 
Now Kendall responded to this one as well, but by saying that she paid in cash, but the bar accused her of lying. What are your thoughts on tipping? I know that it's one of the main benefits of waiting tables or bartending, so to skip out on that for me is pretty vile. Number 8, Sugar Factory. All those many years ago, back in 2016, Kendall's younger sister, Kylie Jenner, was at the opening of Sugar Factory in Orlando, Florida. For her arrival, Kylie had around 3,000 of her fans waiting for her, only for them to apparently be disappointed. The official press release from Sugar Factory themselves, of course, had almost entirely positive things to say surrounding the opening and Kylie's participation in it. But one publication, Star Magazine, seemed to see things a little differently. Coming from an insider source, the magazine got reports that Kylie's appearance at the opening was actually, quote, a huge disappointment, and that apparently she was rude to the majority of her fans. Star Magazine stated that apparently the youngest of the Kardashians slash Jenners apparently showed up to the event an hour late, and if that that weren't bad enough, she only stayed for about 5 minutes to take a few selfies and then just dipped on out of there, leaving fans dissatisfied and disappointed. Number 7. Fitness for a period of time in like the mid 2010s, Khloe Kardashian was pretty heavily focused on her fitness and getting into shape. Hell yeah, we love living healthily. But going along with that time in her life, Khloe would often post her workouts on social media, specifically Snapchat, for fans to follow along to and get themselves in shape alongside the celebrity. But as usually is the case, there was criticism, and some fans didn't think the videos were all that good. Well, Chloe understandably snapped back on Snapchat in 2017. With the pottiest of potty mouths, she addressed the seemingly impossible to please fans, saying, quote, What bothers me so much about people is that I'm giving you guys my workouts on my snaps for free. She continued on, quote, Why the F are you still complaining and saying, if I had a trainer, if I had a gym? Well, I don't have a gym. We're doing everything outside. I'm showing you guys how to do the workout so you don't need a trainer. I'm using everything that I'm sure you guys have around the house or could improvise. What the F? To be completely honest, I actually kind of agree with her. To complain that the videos she made out to share her experience and to try and help people who want to work out aren't good enough is kind of just, just a little rude. But then again, she also said if only complaining burned calories, you guys would be some healthy I can't say the whole of the sentence, but you, you get what I'm saying? Kinda waiting it out. Number six, nobodies. Now, we all need to just sit back and take this one with a little itty tiny bitty grain of salt. When a magazine uses the words insider source, more than half the time, it's just someone off the internet or someone who is not actually an insider, and therefore their statements cannot be taken as fact. It's also worth noting that most people have found Kim to be the nicest person of the family when meeting fans. But, that being said, Kim Kardashian allegedly calls her fans stupid little nobodies. According to Star Magazine in 2012, an insider source, quote unquote, told the publication that, quote, Chris has text and voicemails from Kim where she calls her audience gullible, ouch, stupid imbeciles, ooh, boring little nobodies, yikes, and pathetic people with no lives of their own. Mic drop. Ouch. My feelings are hurt. I'm not a fan, but my feelings are still hurt. Don't be so rude. If you didn't actually say those things though, uh, I'm sorry. And you're great, Kim. You're a great person. Good. Number five. Well then. I'm sure that most of us can agree that social media, but specifically Twitter, is a cesspool of meme lords, trolls, and keyboard warriors. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Twitter is like a breeding ground for hot takes, upsetting political stances, taking shots at famous people who would never normally give you the time of day, and apparently want to be sports commentators. Those very same sport fans found a way to both comment on the state of the Cleveland Cavaliers and take shots at Khloe Kardashian in one swift move. One Twitter user tweeted, presumably as a joke, quote, Cavs haven't been playing too well since Khloe Kardashian. Just saying. That's because Khloe had been in a toxic as hell relationship with Tristan Thompson, who was playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers. For the record though, it was Tristan that was the toxic one. But in defense of her boo and the team he plays for, Khloe decided to clap back, and in her well worded rebuttal, Khloe tweeted, quote, They are number one in their conference, but thanks for sucking my expletive. Hard enough to think I have that much power. Lick on my expletive while you're at it. I think we can all agree, Chloe is truly a wizard of words. A true, a true poet, I think. Very nice. 
Very good. Number four, selfie. Last year, Hulu's Victoria's Secret documentary was available for the world to watch, but one clip from the documentary in particular caught some attention, and it was Kendall Jenner back again being a true Scorpio. It's a very short clip, but essentially the scene sees Kendall sitting on what looks like a makeup chair with a silk pink robe on and a group of fans behind her. Basically, Kendall like reaches back, takes a phone from one of the fans, snaps a couple selfies, and then hands it back. That's all that happened, but the whole thing was just so funny because other than the brief moment where she smiled for the selfie, Kendall was not just straight faced, but she had the stank face on. The one where you really just ain't there to even pretend to be nice to people. That kind of face. I feel like we all know what we're talking about. The fan looked like she was being silently told off when Kendall handed that phone back and when Kendall turns back to camera with this annoyed like eyebrow raise kind of thing, she looks like she wishes she would be anywhere else. Of course, the clip made its way to Twitter where people voiced their thoughts, like this one person who tweeted, quote, this clip of Kendall from the Hulu Victoria's Secret doc really says a lot about who she probably is. Someone on Reddit added, quote, that eyebrow raise and look of annoyance is irritating my soul. One more person did make a good point though when they wrote, it is actually disgusting. They forget that the fans are the reason they have what they have. And that is primarily kind of true, ain't it? Number three, not in the mood. Now look, being a celebrity, having people wanting to take pictures with you all the time can be very exhausting, and celebrities have every right to say no when they don't want to take pictures with their fans. Point blank. Just as every person is allowed to say they don't want to pose for a picture. In an episode of Courtney and Chloe Take the Hamptons, Courtney Kardashian and Scott Disick are off taking a casual ride through his childhood neighborhood in an old convertible. As is bound to happen, a few girls end up noticing them at a stop sign and they ask if they can take a picture with the stars. Scott was all for it, saying sure, but Courtney quickly follows up with no and they continued on with their drive through memory lane. Now Scott apologized to the fans saying, all right, sorry, she said no, as they drove off. And Scott is like, that's not very nice. And she explains she simply didn't want to get out of the car and that she's quote, not in the mood for a pick. Honestly, fair, she doesn't have to be, but I think she could have maybe been just like a wee bit nicer about it. I don't know, what do you think? Number two, best spot in the shade. Ever been asked to move so a celeb can take a photo shoot where you were comfortably chilling? Well, a TikToker by the name of Liz Udell called out Kim Kardashian for allegedly booting her out of this really chill area at Revolve Festival that was right by a lake with like really nice grass, some decent shade, and it had like a fire pit. It was a good spot to get, but it was also a great spot for a photo shoot, and that's exactly what Kim wanted it for. The caption in the clip says, quote, right before before Kim K kicked us out of this shady chill spot at Revolve. With the caption accompanying the clips reading, much love to your photo shoot. Which is kind of like passive aggressive, so obviously the TikToker was a little peeved about it, but to be completely fair, reactions in the comments were pretty mixed. Some folks agreed and thought that it was messed up for Kim Kardashian to ask anyone to move, but others made a good point. Kim was promoting the brand Revolve that were running the festival in the first place, so these fans reasoned that it's fair that Kim gets to choose where she wants the photos taken. One comment read, quote, well duh, they invited influencers. Nobody knows who you are. They're gonna make you move. And that actually seemed to make a little bit of sense to a lot of people and to me as well, to be perfectly honest. But at the same time, when an area is available publicly for everyone being expected to move so that Kim Kardashian can take a photo, I, it kinda sucks. Number one, even at the airport, we gotta end the list with Kendall Jenner yet again. I am so sorry. There are just so many more instances of Kendall being less than great with people as there are for any of the other Kardashians. As part of an ongoing series, a former LAX employee has been taking to TikTok, ranking her experiences with some of the many celebrities she's crossed paths with during her years working at the airport. Kendall Jenner was one of those celebrities, and the TikTok did not paint her in a great picture. The former employee described her interactions with Kendall saying, quote, Every time she flew out, she was not really friendly to anybody and just walked around like really arrogant. Then she slapped Kendall with a 2 out of 10 rating. 2 is pretty good, right? It's, it's one more than one. 
and two more than zero. So I'd say that's something. This Tech Talk pretty heavily reminds me of the first and second point on this list. I promise I don't have anything against Kendall. She just seems to be the one who consistently gets called out for being a little unsavory with employees and, and general people. While it's possible these are just instances of negative experiences staffers had with Kendall, the consistency of the bad experiences, coupled with all that we have seen from Kendall and everyone else, doesn't paint a great picture of her or anyone's character. At number 10, Kim's nannies. Kim Kardashian is arguably the most famous of the Kardashian sisters and also seems to be the busiest. For example, Kim has four kids, a skincare line, her Skims brand, she's attending law school, co-founded an equity team, and recently even hopped on the podcast train. And that's all on top of filming their new reality show on Hulu. You may be asking yourself, how does one woman do all that by herself? She pays people to do it for her, duh. Kardashian has multiple assistants and nannies to help her stay above the overwhelming workload, but has been known to treat them as lesser than her. For instance, on several occasions, Kim and her daughter North would go to lunch accompanied by their nanny, but Kim made her not only sit at a separate table away from them at the restaurant, known to make her nannies walk at least 10 feet away from her at all times. If they walk near her or attempt to walk side by side, apparently she blows up on them behind closed doors. Needless to say, she has had many nannies over the years and has probably made them all cry at least once. At number 9, Courtney in general. While Kim may not be the best boss in the world, it's Courtney who is known as the absolute worst boss of all time. According to former nannies, Courtney was by far the worst Kardashian to work for. Not only is she a neat freak needing every single thing to be exactly where it should be, she's also known for being surprisingly cheap, even once calling a different grocery store while she was shopping to compare the price of a chicken breast because if anyone needs that extra 99 cents, it's Courtney. But this isn't the worst thing she's done. One time, Courtney's daughter had bitten a nanny so hard that she had to quit, but instead of letting it go and taking responsibility for not teaching her daughter how to treat people, she berated the nanny telling her she should have said something to her daughter in the moment. Because it makes sense to blame the woman you're paying to raise your kid instead of the kid herself to prevent future incidents. At number 8, Toxic Chemicals Kylie Jenner is the youngest of the Kardashian clan and is extremely successful for her age. In 2019, she made the cover of Forbes magazine as the youngest self-made billionaire, following the successful partnership between her cosmetic brand and Ulta Beauty. I'm not sure Forbes knows what self-made means, but this collaboration would allow Jenner's brand, previously only available online and at pop-up stores, to be placed on shelves in Ulta's 1,000 plus stores. This is unfortunate considering the true nature of just where those products come from. Many employees at the factory that mixed and packaged her makeup and beauty products have been reported that they were never given proper safety equipment that one would require to do that job. They were only given hair nets, lab coats, and safety goggles, leaving their hands and face completely exposed. Workers would regularly report migraines and mild chemical burns on their hands. I know they say beauty is pain, but I don't think this is what they meant. At number 7, Victoria. Victoria Valero has been Kylie Jenner's close personal assistant since 2015, but the pair go back to 2014 when Valero was interning as a personal assistant for Kris Jenner. After gaining the family's trust, she was hired as Kylie's house manager and soon after became her personal assistant. Victoria and Jenner became very close over the years and she was even present at the secret birth of Kylie's daughter Stormy. You would think with being so close to the family, it would be through thick and thin, right? Well, all good things must come to an end as Victoria quit in 2019. Many fans allege that she had quit to focus on becoming an Instagram influencer, but that was far from her real reason for leaving. Being around that family means seeing a lot of stuff and doing a lot of stuff. Victoria was basically in charge of scheduling Kylie's life. Booking appointments, meetings, massages, all of this is stressful enough, basically being a 24-7 gig, but the job was also very degrading, with Kylie even having Victoria pull out a stool and set it up outside so that Kylie could get out of her car smoother. I think anyone in their right mind would want to get out of that job as soon as possible. At number 6, GoFundMe. In March 2021, Kylie shared an Instagram post asking for prayers for one of her makeup artists, Samuel Rhoda, with the post redirecting fans to a GoFundMe page where they were asked to donate money to cover his medical bills for an upcoming surgery. That's right, the woman who got a feature on Forbes' top 60 self-made women list was asking her fans to donate some of their money. Why would Kylie herself not just use some of her billions of dollars to cover the bills? Well, she went online to claim that her and Sam didn't know each other on a personal level. She had worked with him a few years prior and thought he was a sweetheart. Supposedly, her current makeup artist had shared a post about Samuel's accident, which included a link to a GoFundMe campaign created by his family. She went on to let fans know that she herself donated $5,000. Okay, sure, that's a ton of money to most of us, but for Jenner, that's like five bucks. Something tells me the surgery would be a lot 
lot more than that. This is just another instance proving Kylie is the worst because I know she would drop more than that on a purse. And number 5, the lawsuit. In March of 2021, a lawsuit was arranged by several of Kim's former employees. The plaintiffs claimed that Kardashian failed to pay them overtime, cover expenses, and provide legally mandated breaks. The employees also never received actual pay stubs or any proof of payment whatsoever. They were also made to purchase everything out of pocket, and one plaintiff was even fired on the spot for simply addressing his concerns to Kim. Then, when the rest were eventually let go, they received no type of severance package or pay of any kind. It was also uncovered that Kim would keep 10% of all their earnings for tax purposes, but failed to report their employment to tax authorities. Kim argued that she couldn't be held responsible because most of her employees were apparently hired and paid through third party companies, meaning Kim herself was technically not their direct employer and therefore cannot be liable. Kim maintains that she paid people on time and that they were suing the wrong person, but if that were the case, Kardashian would have used her high status and influence long ago to make things work for her staff and maybe she wouldn't have gotten sued by them. At number 4, Kim and Kanye Kim Kardashian and Kanye West started dating in 2012 and were officially married in 2014. During their marriage, life was rocky to say the least. While Kim was fairly tame for the most part, as we all know, Kanye's mental health was slowly slipping. He began posting hate speech and racially fueled tweets as well as constantly sharing his political views and publicly backing Donald Trump. Is it really any surprise that Kim found comfort in another man's arms? While hosting SNL in 2021, Kim met Pete Davidson while still married to Kanye. We'll cover their side in another entry. Kanye discovered that Kim and Pete began dating following the live show and seemed to be the final breaking point. Apparently, only a few months before the show, Ye and Kim were constantly arguing about everything. Following their divorce, Kim revealed that she would constantly try to help Ye understand why his views and words were wrong. She wanted him to get better, but instead he doubled down and filed for a divorce. Kim is now happily single and received joint custody of her four kids, so it's a win-win for the Kardashian clan and for Kanye. At number 3, they don't pay. While the Kardashians have had their problems with staff individually, there seems to be one specifically toxic trait the family shares as a unit. They don't pay people. Former employees have come forward over the years calling out the family for not paying them fair wages and no overtime hours. The Kardashians don't cover expenses including gas, food, rent. Everything is out of the employee's pocket with zero money coming back. To make matters worse, the Kardashians would not pay them on set paydays, meaning you just got paid when you got paid and had to deal with it. You would think with the family being one of the richest in the world that they would at least pay the people that help run their lives. While they have a massive staff of people cooking their food, folding their clothes, and raising their children, they barely even acknowledge their existence. Just imagine what would happen if the staff decided to walk out. The family would crumble in less than a day. And number 2, Paid in Exposure When Andre Tirbia, famous YouTube animator and content creator, was asked to work with Kylie Jenner, he thought that his life would change forever. He was under the impression that the collaboration would grant him a huge amount of money, possibly a guest spot on a reality show, and maybe some shoutouts online via Instagram and Twitter. However, when Andre brought up the topic of his compensation to Jenner, she responded with, The company doesn't really have a budget right now, so we're going to have to pay you an exposure. Like, hey, that's cool, but you can't cook exposure in a frying pan and eat it for dinner, nor is it a currency accepted at most gas stations or banks. And by exposure, she meant Andre's name being in a small print underneath her content. Andre did what anyone in their right mind would do in that situation and refused to work with her, telling her to take that exposure and shove it where the sun don't shine. And at number 1, lied about their wealth. Oh, not enough proof for ya? Well, here you go. As mentioned earlier in this list, Kylie Jenner made the cover of Forbes magazine in 2019 as the youngest self-made billionaire following the successful partnership between her cosmetic brand and Ulta Beauty. Well, it turns out that wasn't really the case. Jenner allegedly sold half of her company, Kylie Cosmetics, to beauty giant Cody in a deal worth $1.2 billion. This was huge and considered one of the greatest celebrity cash outs of all time. But the first rule of being a famous person is, if you can help it, try not to lie. Especially to Forbes magazine, who did some digging and revealed that Jenner was actually inflating the size and profit margins of her business. It turns out the cosmetic brand was on a much smaller scale than originally thought. As it was uncovered, Jenner only actually made around $314 million after taxes for the company. Several financial advisors backed up the story, claiming that they were berated into complying with the lie and made to help maintain the numbers for the public. Mother of the family, Chris, even played a key role in gathering false business documents to send to Forbes, making her company appear to be in the billions. Remember, if you can't figure something out, just ask mom. At number 10, Kiki Palmer. So many people have opinions on the Car Jenners. The way they look, the 
the way they act, their business, everything. A lot of people don't like them for a number of reasons, but actress Kiki Palmer has blatantly come out and talked about why she dislikes the Kar Jenners, specifically Kylie. Kiki has shown sympathy in the past for Kylie because of the insecurities that Kylie has professed, but Kiki isn't too fond of how Kylie went about dealing with those insecurities. A lot of the Kar Jenners show off their appearances all the time, and many of them have had plastic surgery, but Kiki doesn't seem to like that Kylie flaunted how she changed her appearance like her sisters. The actress believes that Kylie went about dealing with her insecurities in the wrong way, and she hates the fact that she's been praised for this paid glow up. In an interview, Kiki spoke out about all of this where she said, quote, In the sense of the Kardashians, it's like, I'm going to show you so much perfect and be everything a woman should be or everything a man would like or love. Specifically in the situation of Kylie, where you've had a young girl people have seen on television since she was a kid and they literally told her she was so ugly, the ugly person in the family. She went and did apparently everything the world deemed as beautiful. The even crazier part is that everybody loves her for it. End quote. Kiki has deemed Kylie inauthentic, and that's why she dislikes her so much. And at number nine, Kylie Minogue. Before there was Kylie Jenner, Kylie Minogue was the most famous Kylie. But in 2015, Jenner tried to trademark the name Kylie, and Minogue fought back. The Australian pop star shaded Jenner when she tried to trademark their first name. According to the US Patent and Trademark Office, in 2015, Jenner tried to register Kylie in the US for advertising services and endorsement services. But Kylie Minogue's team filed their own charges to ensure the trademark did not go through. Minogue claimed it would, quote, damage her own reputation. In the legal documents, Minogue's team classified Jenner as a, quote, secondary reality television personality known for her, quote, photographic exhibitionism and controversial posts on social media. Very savage. Then Minogue tweeted, quote, Hello, my name is Kylie, hashtag light years, insinuating that she was here way before Jenner. After this whole debacle, it's clear the two do not like each other. And number eight, Madison Beer. There are a handful of people in Hollywood who have their grievances with Kylie's beauty brand. In the past, she's been accused of copying the same packaging as Jeffree Star's makeup brand, but she's also had some beef with Madison Beer because the singer accused Kylie of stealing Madison's purple palette idea from back in 2017. In October of 2017, Kylie released her purple palette from her Kylie Cosmetics brand, and soon after the collection was made public, Madison shaded Kylie on Instagram, alleging that Kylie betrayed her. Madison posted on Instagram saying, quote, when people fully steal your idea and they come out with what was supposed to be a collab, whack, end quote. Though the collab between Madison and Kylie was never confirmed, Madison appeared to have hinted at it back in March of 2017 when talking to paparazzi. I could imagine how hurt you would feel if you worked on something just for it all to fall through with you but still be sold. That would be a serious punch to the gut. When a follower called Madison out on being salty about the whole ordeal, and that she didn't invent purple eyeshadow, the singer clapped back saying, quote, you sound very unintelligent. Who in their right mind would think they invented an eyeshadow color or shade? That is not at all in any way what I said or even slightly implied, end quote. Apparently, Kylie and Madison were friends before all of this happened, so I wonder if they're over it now or if that ruined their friendship. In at number seven, Paris Jackson. Kendall and Kylie got tons of backlash when they released a series of vintage t-shirts for their clothing line and photos of legends like Notorious B.I.G., Tupac Shakur, and the, the Doors and Ozzy Osbourne were beside their own on the shirts. Tons of celebrities called out the sisters for their tone-deaf decision, including Paris Jackson, the daughter of the late Michael Jackson. Paris took to Twitter and wrote, quote, as a huge fan of Zeppelin, The Doors, Floyd, I mean, these bands literally helped shape who I am today. I can't condone this fashion. Legends like these who completely changed our world today, not just the music world, should be respected and honored, not turned into this. Pink Floyd is not Chanel, Led Zeppelin is not Michael Kors, Metallica is not Givenchy. Don't get it twisted. Hashtag bands not brands and hashtag respect music. Along with getting tons of heat, the sisters were also slapped with multiple lawsuits, so they decided to stop selling the shirts shortly after their release. At number six, Selena Gomez. Another celebrity who seems to have had beef with Kylie is former Disney star Selena Gomez. Turns out that Selena had an on and off again friendship with the Jenner sisters and it all stemmed from Justin Bieber. During the time that Selena and Justin were a thing, Selena started feeling a little iffy about Kylie specifically because she thought that Kylie was flirting with Justin. Selena and Kylie apparently got into a confrontation in 2014 because of it and it all went down at Justin's house. According to sources, what happened that evening was that Kylie allegedly, quote, sent sexy pics of herself to Justin, and that's what started the fight. Selena saw the pictures on Justin's phone and she freaked out and immediately left, end quote. 
The source also commented on the Jenner sisters saying quote, Kylie and Kendall live in such a fantasy world with what the show has turned their family into. At the end of the day, Selena was just there to be a part of the show and enhance their brand rather than being legit friends. Thankfully, Selena realized that she was being used and got out. End quote. Some sources also claim that Selena stopped being friends with the Jenners because of their use of substances, drinking and partying, but the Jenners have denied those claims. Halfway number 5, Lourdes Leon. Lourdes Leon, daughter of Madonna, dissed Kylie after Lourdes was invited to Kylie's birthday party in 2015. Apparently, she finds the Kardashian family vile and was horrified about the invite. A source revealed that Lourdes shaded Kylie over her social media activity and selfie taking. After she received the invite, a source exposed, quote, She couldn't believe Kylie thought that she'd be receptive to a party invite and has completely ignored her. As far as Lourdes is concerned, she's not going to lower herself to even responding. Adding that Lourdes is very picky about who she spends her time with and Kylie doesn't make the cut. The source added that Lourdes' friends are, quote, much more interested in changing the world than in taking selfies. And in my opinion, you must really hate someone if the thought of them inviting you to their birthday leaves you horrified. At number 4, Amber Rose. The Kardashians have caused a lot of tension in the past in case of their relationships. There's been so much drama with cheating, rumors, babies, and so much more. So it's not surprising to know that Kylie is hated because of relationship quarrels. Amber Rose has had some harsh things to say about Kylie in the past, especially when it came to her relationship with rapper Tyga. Tyga had left Black China, the mother of his son, for Kylie, and Amber did not approve of that at all. During a radio interview, Amber spoke out about that drama when she said, quote, She's a baby, she needs to go to bed at 7 o'clock and relax. That's ridiculous. Tyga should be ashamed of himself. That's how I feel, for sure. He has a beautiful woman and a baby and left that all for a 16 year old who just turned 17. End quote. Amber wasn't the only one to comment on Kylie and Tyga's relationship, but her commentary definitely had some heat. And at number 3, Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star has been coming for Kylie publicly ever since she came out with an online makeup company that was a competitor to Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Their feud is totally one sided, but I'm sure that Kylie has seen all the shade that Jeffree has dished out. Back when Jeffree was famous for his makeup reviews, he reviewed Kylie Cosmetics on multiple occasions, and more often than not, he trashed her products. When reviewing her over $300 brush set, he called it cheap dollar store product. Jeffrey and Shane Dawson also trashed Kylie's skin in their review, where they called the products drying, irritating, and overpriced. Jeffrey even shaded Kylie's Forbes cover, where she was declared the world's youngest self made billionaire. He said, quote, I declined the feature, so they had to pick someone. At number two, Amanda Stenberg. The most common scandal that the Card Jenners seem to get involved in is something involving cultural appropriation. Many of the Card Jenners have been accused of appropriating black culture and black fishing, and Kylie seems to be one of the the worst offenders when it comes to these things. The internet has got really fired up when Kylie was seen wearing cornrows, and actress Amanda Stenberg went off on Kylie for it. The Hunger Games actress tweeted saying, quote, When you appropriate black features and culture but fail to use your position of power to help black Americans by directing attention towards your wigs instead of police brutality or racism, hashtag white girls do it better. End quote. On top of that, Amanda also posted a video titled Don't Cash Crop on My Cornrow, explaining that, quote, the line between cultural appropriation and cultural exchange is always going to be blurred, but here's the thing. Appropriation occurs when a style leads to racist generalizations or stereotypes where it originated but deemed high fashion, cool, or funny when the privileged take it for themselves. End quote. Amanda already took a disliking towards Kylie after that, but that didn't seem to do much because she kept posting in cornrows after that. And finally, at number one, Black China. There is absolutely no doubt in anyone's mind that Black China hates Kylie Jenner. I think pretty much anyone would hate the woman that your boyfriend left you for. Back in 2014, Black China was in a long term relationship with Tyga. The pair even had a son together. But that all changed when Kylie came into the picture, and Tyga left China for a 16 year old Kylie. Kylie and Tyga dated for two years before splitting. At this time, tons of China's friends and family were shading Kylie for breaking up a family, including Amber Rose. Apparently, Kim Kardashian was even friends with China while she was with Tyga. And Kim said that China was devastated when she found out the Tyga was leaving her and their three year old son, King Cairo, for Kylie. Years later, China would get in a long term relationship with Rob Kardashian, Kylie's half brother, and have a child with him. Some even speculate that Black China got with Rob purely out of spite so she could make Kylie's life hell. 
In at number 10, Nick Lachey. Nick Lachey also exposed Kim for being a little too friendly with the paparazzi in order to get some publicity from him. The singer claims that Kim might have only been dating him for publicity. Apparently, the pair only dated for about a week and some shady stuff went down. One time he said, let's just say this, we went to a movie, no one followed us there. Somehow, mysteriously, when we left, there were 30 photographers waiting outside. And I think from that story, it's very clear that Kim was tipping off the paparazzi, so there would be photos of them together. And if you didn't already know, unless someone is like incredibly famous, if there are paparazzi when they are out, they definitely tipped off that paparazzi. And at number nine, John Hamm. The Mad Men star definitely has some choice words for the Kardashians, and based off what he said, it's clear he does not like the family and doesn't approve of how they rose to fame. With him telling LUK, whether it's Paris Hilton or Kim Kardashian or whoever, stupidity is certainly celebrated. Being an idiot is a valuable commodity in this culture because you're rewarded significantly. It's celebrated. It doesn't make sense to me. So clearly he doesn't like the reality TV stars whatsoever and doesn't like how our society praises socialites like Paris Hilton and the Kardashians. And like, I kind of get where he's going. Like, you know, he has, he has some valid points. <laughs> in at number eight, Kristen Cavallari. Kristen Cavallari has a very interesting relationship with the Car Jenner clan. It all started when Kristen dated Brody Jenner. And through that relationship, she also became friends with the Kardashians. But after Brody and Kristen broke up, there was tension between Kristen and Kourtney Kardashian. After Kourtney caught Scott out with Kristen, while well, they were in an off period. And after that, Kristen called out the family for using that information as a publicity stunt to get viewers to their show. And allegedly after rumors broke that Kristen and Scott were having an affair, the Kardashians refused to deny it and instead waited to address it on their show. Leaving Kristen looking like, you know, the bad, terrible other woman when it just wasn't even true. More than a little shady if you ask me. And at number seven, Barack Obama. Former President Barack Obama also couldn't hold his tongue when talking about the famous family. And it's definitely quite the compliment when the president is speaking about you, or is it? The former president was talking about the changing dynamics of the American dream and how it's shifting with time, saying, there was not that window into the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Kids weren't monitoring every day what Kim Kardashian was wearing or where Kanye West was going on vacation and thinking that somehow was the mark of success. And ouch, here it's pretty obvious he was throwing some major shade in their way. And he doesn't seem to like how they are now the standard for what success is. And apparently Kanye West did not like those comments and actually fired back at the president. But also since Obama was a former president, you know, I trust his opinion and judgment way more than Kanye's. And at number six, Chris Humphreys. Chris Humphreys was someone who probably challenged the Kardashian family the most and exposed secrets about them I'm sure they did not want out. Kim and Chris got married in one of the most lavish televised ceremonies ever. But famously, after only 72 days, the couple split because Kim was having second thoughts. But based off how much content their reality shows got because of that relationship, then the breakup, Chris called Kim out for fraud, arguing that the whole relationship was just a publicity stunt. And their divorce was so messy, it lasted two whole years before it was finalized. But during the massive trial, Chris exposed that a lot of the Kardashian show was scripted and that the show purposefully made him look bad. Like when him and Scott threw a party in one episode while the girls were out of town and they looked really horrible for going behind their backs when they told them not to have the party. The whole thing was actually just a huge sham with Kim and Courtney knowing about the party and acting like they didn't know for TV, in turn making Chris look like a terrible husband when it literally wasn't like that at all. Halfway at number five, Rebel Wilson. Rebel Wilson revealed on radio show that she was presented an opportunity to present an award with Kendall and Kylie Jenner, but Wilson ended up turning it down. With her saying in the interview, I got asked to present with Kendall and Kylie at the recent VMAs and said no. It's not that you hate any of them individually, but it's just that everything they stand for is against everything I stand for, and they're not famous for talent. I've worked really hard to get where I've gotten to. And even though a lot of people who dislike the Kardashians share the same sentiments, Oprah Winfrey actually came to their defense against Wilson, if you can believe it. With Oprah saying that she couldn't believe how hard the family works. Referencing when she filmed the family for Oprah's show, with Cruz taping the family for seven hours straight, and then they filmed more of their reality show after. So as we all know, the Kardashian family really works very hard, even though it doesn't seem like they do too much. 
And at number four, Bette Midler. After Kim uploaded her incredibly famous nude selfie where she covered her, you know, nether regions with just like black bars, the internet went ablaze talking about it. One of the people that didn't hold their tongue was Bette Midler, who tweeted out, Kim Kardashian tweeted a nude selfie today. If Kim wants us to see a part of her we've never seen, she's gonna have to swallow the camera. Which, come on, you have to admit, it's pretty hilarious. Like, even if you like the Kardashians, like, it's a good tweet. As a clapback, Kim tweeted out that it was past Bet's bedtime and that she was a fake friend. And Bet responded back, looks like anyone can take a selfie, but not everyone can take a joke. And then she lightened the tension by posting her own new. When talking about the feud later, Bet had no hard feelings and said she takes Twitter pretty lightly and hoping that Kim did the same. Hopefully Kim wasn't actually too peeved about that. I mean, come on, it was clearly a joke. I don't know. <laughs> And at number three, Wendy Williams. If you watch Wendy's show, which I definitely do on occasion, she spills the tea like nobody else. Then you know she does not like the Kardashians and is always very blunt when talking about them. But Wendy got the spot of a Kardashian hater when she made some shady comments about Kim after her robbery incident. And when talking about the incident in Paris, Wendy said, I would hope that she's not making any part of this up for dramatic effect. Because this family, you know, they're kind of soulless. You can't believe everything that you hear. But this was very, very upsetting. And although I do not agree with Wendy at all that the Paris incident was a publicity stunt, a lot of people did feel that the incident could have been exaggerated by the family for views. With people citing numerous times in the past that this has happened with the family. And again, I do not agree, but I mean, she just brought it up as kind of a possibility, and obviously, she loves to shade them whenever she can. And at number two, Black China. Black China is another Kardashian ex who was ousted from the family after her and Rob's relationship ended. And you know that whatever went down was bad because the family is still nice to Tristan and not China even though Tristan is arguably way worse and embarrassed them so much more. The first of the feud was surrounding the fact that Kylie started dating Tyga, who was China's ex. Then China started dating Rob. And then the two got engaged and then pregnant very quickly. But after they had dream, the whole thing fell apart and China and the Kardashians were facing off on social media. China even filed a lawsuit against the family, claiming that they stopped her show, Rob and China, from getting a second season. A judge dismissed that case, but China still shades the Kardashians whenever she can. And at number one, Anna Wintour. This last one is something that I had no idea existed, but it's probably the shadiest one of all. So Vogue is one of the most prestigious magazines to be on the cover of, and Kim Kardashian and Kanye West were put on the cover in a very controversial move by the magazine's editor, Anna Wintour. When talking about the criticism, she noted that it would be a misstep to ignore the couple's influence, and she made the choice to lead and deal with the backlash rather than follow. And all of that praise to the couple is, you know, all well and good, until she gives them quite a, a backhanded compliment, saying, I think if we just remain deeply tasteful and just put deeply tasteful people on the cover, it would be a rather boring magazine. Nobody would talk about us. And although I totally get what she's like trying to say, calling the couple, you know, deeply untasteful is definitely more than a little shady. But I mean, if anyone can shade anyone, it's Anna Wintour. She can shade whoever she wants. All right, guys, let me know what you're thinking about this one below. Which celebrity do you think was the shadiest? And how much do you trust the family? As you guys know, I personally love them so much. But I can also see times when it seemed that getting publicity is all that they really cared about. Starting off at number 10, we have Kylie Minogue. Kylie Minogue and Kylie Jenner got in a huge legal battle over their names a few years ago. Basically, Jenner was trying to trademark the name Kylie, but she's obviously not the only person in the world with that name. According to the US Patent and Trademark Office, in 2015, Jenner tried to register Kylie in the US for advertising services and endorsement services. Minogue then had her team file for the registration to not go ahead as it would damage her own reputation. And in the legal documents, Minogue did not hold back, describing Jenner as a quote, secondary reality television personality, known for her quote, photographic exhibitionism and controversial posts on social media. Minogue then tweeted out, quote, hello, my name is Kylie, hashtag light years, insinuating that she's light years ahead of the reality star. And even though at the time Jenner deserved to lose the trademark, I wonder what would happen today now that the name Kylie is affiliated with Kylie Jenner a vast majority of the time. 
Let me know below. And at number nine, Forbes. News outlet Forbes was a huge part in getting Kylie Jenner the respect that her and her family wanted so badly. When they announced that she was the world's youngest billionaire, people changed their minds about the business Kylie was doing. But Forbes later publicly retracted those statements, saying that they were caught up in Kylie's web of lies, and she actually wasn't a billionaire after all. The bombshell came from documents that were made public when Cody purchased 51% of Kylie Cosmetics. That deal valued Kylie Cosmetics at nearly $1.2 billion and backed up the billionaire claims. But later, those documents showed that the company generated $125 million in sales for 2018. For example, despite the Jenner family leading Forbes to believe that it had generated $360 million. As a response, Kylie tweeted, quote, I've never asked for any title or tried to lie my way there ever, period. Kylie then tried to change the subject by tweeting that there's more important things to be worrying about. And even though that's true, it was crazy to learn that her billionaire status was a Kardashian PR statement. Although she's still worth about $900 million, so I mean, still worth quite a lot. In at number eight, Paris Jackson. Paris Jackson is of course the daughter of the late Michael Jackson. And because of this, she has a deep love and respect for music. So when she saw that Kendall and Kylie Jenner were selling t-shirts with various musical icons on them, she wasn't happy. The shirts featured musical legends like Notorious B.I.G., Tupac Shakur, The Doors, and Ozzy Osbourne. When talking about the scandal, she said, quote, as a huge fan of Zeppelin, The Doors, Floyd, I mean, these bands literally helped shape who I am today. I can't condone this fashion going on to explain that these legends should be respected and honored. And this was just one case of the girls using things that aren't theirs to make some money. And at number seven, Amanda Steinberg. As we know, Kylie and her family are famous for cultural appropriation and stealing looks from black culture, then getting praised for it. Actress Amanda Steinberg was a celebrity who decided to stand up to Kylie after Kylie posted a picture wearing cornrows. Stenberg commented on Kylie's photo, quote, when you appropriate black features and culture, but fail to use your position of power to help black Americans by directing attention towards your wigs instead of police brutality or racism. Hashtag white girls do it better. Kylie clapped back saying, quote, mad if I don't, mad if I do, go hang with Jaden or something. Referring to their mutual friend, Jaden Smith. But honestly, that was the weakest comeback I've literally ever seen. And at number six, Danielle Brigoli slash bad baby. Danielle Brigoli is known for being shady and taking aim at celebrities, so it was no surprise when she shaded Kylie in one of her music videos. The song was called These Hoes, and in the video, there was a part where a girl that looked eerily similar to Kylie was getting lip and butt injections. And the whole point of the song is that she isn't like other LA girls, insinuating that Brigoli is not fake like Kylie is. And a little fun fact, so many people thought that the Kylie impersonator in the video was Tana Mojo, that Tana literally had to come out saying that it wasn't her. I guess this video is both shady to Kylie and Tana then. Halfway number five, Kiki Palmer. Kiki Palmer slammed Kylie in a 2017 interview where she was talking about the importance of self-confidence and beauty on social media. In the interview, Kiki said, quote, specifically the situation with Kylie, where you've had a young girl people have seen on television since she was a kid, and they literally told her she was so ugly, the ugly person in the family. She went and did apparently everything the world deems as beautiful. The even crazier part is that everyone loves her for it. Kylie never addressed the comments, but years later, Kiki spoke about them again with Andy Cohen, but they're clarifying their statements were not meant to be a dig at Kylie, but she was just one example. With Kiki adding that all she wanted was for people to embrace their own bodies, not change just because people are telling them to. And at number four, Amber Rose. Amber Rose was very outspoken when Kylie and Tyga started dating, because honestly, I think a lot of people were a little suspicious of their age gap with Amber making comments that the relationship was wrong because of Kylie's young age. With Amber telling The Breakfast Club, quote, she's a baby. She needs to go to bed at seven o'clock and relax. Adding, that's ridiculous. Tyga should be ashamed of himself. For sure, he's a beautiful woman and a baby and left that for a 16 year old who just turned 17. And at first the comments seemed to take aim at Tyga because he was the adult in the situation. But then the comments turned nasty towards Kylie when she said that he just left a beautiful woman and a child for a teenager. But I'm sorry, Amber's not wrong. That relationship was nasty. And at number three, Ellen DeGeneres. Even though we can't trust anything Ellen says anymore, there was one point in time where Ellen was very annoyed with Kylie Jenner, and it proved how much of a diva that she can be. Ellen and the Kardashians are very close, with the Kardashians giving tons of exclusive interviews to Ellen. But Ellen might not be that fond of Kylie. In late 2015, Kylie was scheduled to appear on the show, and apparently had five meltdowns before doing so. She also refused to use Ellen's glam team, and brought her own instead, which meant Kylie needed extra dressing rooms. A source told Radar Online, quote, Kylie also insisted that she have two VIP parking spots because she didn't want to walk from the parking structure to the studio, which is less than a block away. She also arrived late to film the show, and all that combined definitely shows some huge diva energy. And at number two, Miley Cyrus. 
As we know, Miley Cyrus does not hold back when dishing out some good old shade. So a few years back, Miley posted a photo to her Instagram with her cleavage and signature pout. What's new, right? But then Miley decided to throw some shade by posting a photo of her pouting and pushing up her own cleavage with the caption quote, do you think if I push my boobs up, I'll get more followers? Then to make it clear, she was probably making fun of Kylie. She posted quote, dear women, you all are tacky AF. Why don't we overly, myself included, fortunate women come together and try to create and bring jobs to other women in desperate need of them so they can support not only themselves, but their families. And although she never called out Kylie by name, you didn't have to look too hard to see who she was calling out. In at number one, Kanye West. This one might be the worst because Kylie actually turned her back on her own family in order to get some money. So Kanye owns Yeezy Shoes, which has turned into a well-recognized shoe brand. But before that happened, Puma actually snagged Kylie to be in their new campaign, which happened to be Kanye's biggest competitor at the time. In an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, Kim said, quote, Kanye had Kylie walk in his first two Adidas shows. He really believed in her as part of his brand. I feel like this was a conflict of interest. Kylie ended up getting a seven-figure deal with Puma, but lost the respect of Kanye along the way. Before the deal was finished, Kanye tweeted, quote, a thousand percent there will never be a Kylie Puma anything. That's on my family. A thousand percent Kylie is on Yeezy team. Then adding in another tweet, quote, Puma, we're gonna give your measly million dollars back. Never try to divide the family. But now I'm sure he's learned his lesson to never trust Kylie because even after all of that, she took the Puma deal. Number 10, Kim's nannies. Kim Kardashian is arguably one of the most famous of the Kardashian sisters, and it would also seem she's the busiest. For example, Kim has four kids, a skincare line, her Skims brand, she's attending law school, co-founded an equity team, and even recently hopped on the podcast train. In addition to filming her new reality show on Hulu, you may be asking yourself, how does one woman do all of that by herself? Well, she pays people to do it for her, duh. She has multiple assistants and nannies to help her stay above the overwhelming workload, but has been known to treat them as lesser than herself. For instance, on several occasions, Kim and her daughter North would go to lunch, accompanied by a nanny. But Kim would always make her nanny sit at a separate table far away from them when they were in restaurants. But she is known to make her nannies also walk at least like 10 feet away from her at all times. Unless she has multiple nannies with her at once, then she likes to make them stand in like a V formation because it looks cool apparently. If they walk near her or attempt to try and walk side by side, she blows up at them behind closed doors. And needless to say, she has had many nannies over the year and has probably made a lot of them cry at least once. Number nine, Courtney in general. While Kim may not be the best boss in the world, it's Courtney who is known as the absolute worst boss of all time. According to former nannies, Courtney was by far the worst Kardashian to work for. Not only is she a neat freak needing every single thing to be exactly where it should be, but she's also known for being surprisingly cheap. Even once calling a grocery store while she was shopping to compare the prices of a chicken breast. Cause you know, if anyone needs that extra 99 cents, it's Courtney. But this isn't the worst thing she's done. At one time, Courtney's daughter had bitten a nanny so hard that she had to quit. But instead of letting it go and taking responsibility for not teaching her daughter how to act properly, she actually berated the nanny and told her that she should have said something to her daughter in the moment. Cause yes, blame the woman that you're paying to raise your child instead of the child itself who's probably got some kind of an abandonment issue. Number eight, toxic chemicals. Kylie Jenner is the youngest of the Kardashian clan, isn't extremely successful for her age. In 2019, she made the cover of Forbes magazine as the youngest self-made billionaire ever following the successful partnership between her cosmetic brand and Ulta, a beauty salon company, which would allow the brand previously only available online and in random pop-up stores to be placed on shelves in Ulta's 1,000 plus stores. This is unfortunate considering the true nature of just where those products come from. You see, many employees at the factory that mix and package her makeup um, have reported that they were never given any proper safety equipment that one would require to do that job. They were only given hair nets, lab coats, and safety goggles, leaving their hands and faces completely exposed. And workers would regularly report migraines, mild chemical burns on their hands, and a myriad of other symptoms. If this isn't bad enough, they were also forced to act as human test subjects for Kylie's new products. Now, Kylie was very proud of her company not testing products on animals, but we can agree that using people like guinea pigs is like a billion times worse, right guys? Number seven, 
the underpay. While the Kardashians have had their problems with staff individually, there seems to be one specifically toxic trait that the family shares as a unit. They don't like to pay people. Former employees have come forward over the years calling out the family for not paying them fair wages or overtime hours. The Kardashians don't cover expenses, meaning gas, food, rent, anything that you need is paid out of pocket, with zero money coming back to you. To make matters worse, the Kardashians wouldn't pay them on a set amount of days, meaning you just kinda got a check when you got a check and had to deal with it in between A and B. You would think with the family being one of the richest in the world that they would at least pay the people that help run their lives. Now, while they have a massive staff of people cooking their food, folding their clothes, and raising their children, they barely even acknowledge their existence. Just imagine what would happen if that staff decided to walk out. The family would crumble in less than a day. Number six, factory workers. Popping back to Kylie's makeup factory for a moment, we felt the need to split her misdoings into two separate entries simply because of just how messed up this place really is. Not only do they not have proper safety equipment and are basically used as human test subjects whenever Kylie wants, the factory itself is small and cramped, with many employees claiming that there were too many workers and not enough space. This description sounds very similar to, oh, a sweatshop, which is a word describing a workplace in which the employees work ridiculous hours and brutal conditions for nearly nothing for pay. And a lot of people agreed with that statement. One former tester recounts having to constantly go back and forth to the bathroom as her anxiety was always through the roof. She was around so many people so much of her day and it was such a terrible work environment, we completely understand the need to escape. At one point a few years back, Kylie even refused to pay her employees at a garment factory in Bangladesh, leaving thousands of employees with no money and no idea when or if they were going to return to work. Man, you know what, you suck Kylie. Number five, Victoria. Victoria Valero has been Kylie's close personal assistant since 2015. But the pair go back to 2014 when she was interning as a personal assistant for Kylie's mother, Chris. After gaining the family's trust, she was hired as Kylie's house manager at first, but soon after became her personal assistant. Herself and Jenner became very close over the years, and Victoria was even present at the secret birth of Kylie's daughter, Stormy. Now, you would think with being so close to the family through thick and thin that she would want to stick around, right? Well, all good things must come to an end, as Victoria decided to quit in 2019. Many fans allege that she had just quit her job to focus on becoming an Instagram influencer, but that was far from her real reason for leaving. Being in that family means seeing a lot of stuff and doing a lot of stuff, and Victoria was basically in charge of scheduling Kylie's life, booking appointments, meetings, massages, all of this stressful enough basically being a 24-7 gig, but the job was also very degrading, with Kylie having Victoria even pull out a stool once and set it up outside so that Kylie could get out of her car smoother. I think anyone in their right mind would want to get out of that job as quickly as possible. Number four, paid in exposure. When Andre Turbia, a very famous YouTube animator and content creator, was asked to work with Kylie Jenner, he thought that his life would change forever. He was under the impression that the collaboration would grant him a huge amount of money, possibly a guest spot on her reality TV show, or maybe some shout outs online via Instagram and Twitter. However, when Andre brought up the topic of his compensations to Jenner, she responded with, oh, the company doesn't actually have a budget right now to pay you, so we're just gonna have to pay you an exposure. Like, okay, that's cool. You can't cook exposure in a frying pan and eat it for dinner though. And I'm pretty sure it's not currency accepted at any gas stations or banks that I know of. And of course, by exposure, she meant that Andre's name was going to be printed as small as possible underneath her content. Andre did what anyone in their right mind would do in that situation and refused to work with her, telling her to take her exposure and shove it where the sun don't shine. Number three, GoFundMe. In March 2021, Kylie, oh look, she's back again, shared an Instagram post asking for prayers for one of her makeup artist named Samuel Rota. The post redirected fans to a GoFundMe page where they were asking to donate money for covering his medical bills for an upcoming surgery. That's right, the woman made a feature on Forbes top 60 self-made women and was asking her fans to give over the goods. So why would she not just use some of her billions of dollars to cover the bills herself? Well, she went online to claim that her and Sam didn't actually know each other personally, but she had worked with him a few years ago and thought that he was a sweetheart. Suppose 
Supposedly, her current makeup artist had shared a post about Samuel's accident, which included a link to a GoFundMe campaign created by his family. She went on to let fans know that she herself donated like $5,000. Okay, sure, sure, that's a ton of money for us, but for Jenner, that's like five bucks. So something tells me the surgery is gonna be a little bit more than that. This is just another instance proving that Kylie is the absolute worst. Number two, Forbes flub. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, was that not enough proof for you that Kylie sucks? Well, hey, here you go. As mentioned earlier in this list, Kylie Jenner made the cover of Forbes magazine in 2019 as the youngest self-made billionaire ever following the successful partnership between her cosmetic brand, named after herself, and Ulta, a beauty salon company. Well, it turned out that wasn't really the case. Jenner allegedly sold half of her cosmetics company, Kylie Cosmetics, to beauty giant Cody in a deal worth $1.2 billion. Now, this was huge and considered one of the greatest celebrity cash outs of all time. But the first rule of being a famous person is if you can help it, try not to lie. Especially to like Forbes magazine, who did some digging and revealed that Jenner was actually inflating the size and profit margins of her business. It turned out the cosmetic brand was on a much smaller scale than originally thought, as it was uncovered Jenner only actually made around $314 million after taxes for her company. Several financial advisors backed up the story, claiming that they were berated into complying with the lie and made to help maintain the numbers for publicity's sake. The mother of the family, Chris, even played a key role in gathering false business documents to send to Forbes, making her company appear to be in the billions. Remember, if you can't figure something out, just ask mom. And number one, the lawsuit. In March of 2021, a lawsuit was arranged by several of Kim's former employees. The plaintiffs claim Kardashian West failed to pay over time, cover expenses, or provide any legally mandated breaks, which like, hey, super illegal. They also never received actual pay stubs or any proof of payment whatsoever. They were also made to purchase everything out of pocket, and one plaintiff was even fired on the spot for simply addressing his concerns to Kim. And when the rest were eventually let go, they received no type of severance package or pay of any kind. It was also uncovered that Kim would keep 10% of all of their earnings for tax purposes, but failed to report their employment to tax authorities. Kim's argument was that she could not be held responsible for any of this, as most of her employees were supposedly hired and paid by a third party company, meaning that she herself was not technically their direct employer and therefore could not be liable. Kim maintains that she paid people on time and that they were suing the wrong person, but if that were the case, maybe Kardashian would have used some of her high status and influence long ago to make things work for her staff so that, hey, maybe she wouldn't be getting sued right now. Something to think about, Kim. At number 10, bribes. At this point, we all know that the Kardashians have a my way or the highway kind of attitude. They will get what they want by any means necessary, and we've seen this a few times over the Kardashians' respective careers, but one of the lesser known times that this sort of attitude came out was when Kris Jenner was trying to save her short-lived talk show. Mama Jenner dreamed of being a talk show host, but those dreams were sort of crushed when her talk show premiered in the summer of 2013. She got a series of reviews, and when she read them, she came across one that she really didn't like. One reviewer named Linda Stasi from the New York Post wrote a column about the show and called Chris a quote, a demented Norma Desmond, end quote. Well, because Chris didn't like what Linda had wrote about her, she decided to send the writer a bribe of a dozen Magnolia cupcakes and a $325 sterling silver pen from Tiffany's, along with a note saying to write a better review next time. In the end though, this bribe didn't actually work because her show was canceled not long after. At number nine, sweatshops. The Kardashians have faced backlash and scandal many times in the past, so really they're nothing new. But one of their more extreme scandals came from when one of their many clothing brands got exposed. In 2011, a Kardashian clothing brand came under fire after it was revealed that the garments were being produced by Chinese workers being paid eight cents a day. Can you imagine these millionaires paying workers eight cents? Insane, right? A nonprofit organization called China Labor Watch, a group that fights sweatshops, released this information during investigation into the Kardashian brand. Of course, Mama Jenner came in and stepped in, and she claimed that they didn't know anything about that, going on to say, quote, the factories are very well policed and meet factory standards, end quote. No one is talking about the factory standards, Chris. We're talking about basically not paying people for making clothes that you're about to sell for a hundred bucks a piece. That's the tea. Before we carry on dishing about the Kardashian secrets though, why not take a quick moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far. And while you're at it, maybe consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one.
At number eight, Kardashian divorce. Remember when Kim K was married to Chris Humphreys? Yeah, that was kind of a blip in the Kardashian timeline, but hey, it still happened. They were only married for 72 days, but it was still messy, and their subsequent divorce was just as messy. The cameras for their show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, showed off much of their tumultuous marriage, but the cameras were ultimately cut when it came to their divorce, but it wasn't for lack of trying. Kim wanted to film her goodbye call with Chris over Skype, where she was going to say her final farewell and tell him that she really loved him. But Chris saw right through Kim's attempt to get content out of their divorce and flat out refused, saying that he refused to ever be on another episode ever again. Honestly, I can't blame him for making that decision. At number seven, Nanny Knows. The Kardashians have been exposed for a lot over the years by countless people. Honestly, this could be its own video in and of itself if we haven't already done that. Anyways, one of the people that joined the Exposing the Kardashians Club was the family's former nanny. The nanny, a woman named Pam Behan, exposed Chris for her parenting. Although Chris looks like a cool, fun mom, almost acting like one of the Kardashian sisters rather than a parent. According to the nanny, that is all a charade and couldn't be farther from the truth. Turns out that Chris was actually a really mean mom. She said that all of the girls were really shallow and even exposed Chris for being mean to Chloe and criticizing her for being overweight. On top of that, according to the nanny, Chris was also a stickler for healthy foods, saying that she was obsessed with keeping produce in the house, and she even exposed her for having a meltdown when she forgot to pick up broccoli. Now that is a very different side of Kris Jenner that we never get to see. At number six, private investigator. Back to past Kardashian relationships, remember when Khloe Kardashian and Lamar Odom were a thing? Yeah, super messy, as most Kardashian marriages tend to be. But this one was ultra messy because it turns out that at one point, Chloe hired a private investigator to follow Lamar around to watch if he was cheating on Chloe. This was something that we didn't get to see on the family's reality show, but apparently the private investigator was hired to catch Lamar with at least five different mistresses. But why put all this effort into a supposed cheater? Well, it turns out that there was a specific clause in their prenuptial agreement that if one of them was caught cheating, then the divorce settlement payout would be larger to the other party. This means that with the help of her private investigator, Chloe would be able to get a higher settlement in the divorce. The things people do for money. At number five, who started the show? The family's reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, has been on air for so long that it almost feels like it has been on TV forever. Obviously, it wasn't actually on TV since like the beginning of time, but it was certainly a staple in a lot of people's homes. This show really boosted the careers of all of the Car Jenners, but who had the original idea for the show? Well, that's up for debate. According to Caitlyn Jenner, she wrote in her book that she was the one who came up with the initial idea for the reality show, not Chris, as many were led to believe. In the memoir, Caitlyn wrote that she told Chris about her idea for the show, saying, quote, The house is awash in puberty and adolescence and young adulthood and two parents with very different styles. It seems to me something is there for television. End quote. She then goes on to say that Chris then claimed to have come up with the idea for the show and then took it upon herself to pitch the show to Ryan Seacrest and the rest is history. Talk about starting things off on a sour note. At number four, always perfect. Kylie and Kendall Jenner are the babies of the Car Jenner clan, and they were pretty young when they started to rise to fame. Because the cameras were always on them, and because they were starting to gain notoriety on their own, their mom Chris decided that they needed to look perfect at all times to make themselves and the family look better in the eyes of the media. In an interview with Cosmopolitan in 2017, Kylie opened up about this dynamic in her young life and revealed that Kris Jenner had nail techs come to the house every week to do the girls' nails to make sure that they looked as perfect as possible. Kylie said that because this was ingrained in her from such a young age, that this just became a habit of hers even going into her adult life, which is why we see Kylie flexing her new nails on the gram. In the interview, she went into further detail about having to look put together all the time, where she said, quote, my mom would make us do it. She would have a nail artist come to the house once a week, she would make us get our nails done. She was like, you are never going to look like you're not put together, so we're always getting them done. End quote. At number three, fake homes. You know how on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, when they start a new scene, a new place, they show the front of the person's house? Well, it turns out that's kind of a lie. The houses that they show in the reality show aren't actually the Kardashians' real houses. In the beginning, they used to show the front of the Kardashians' houses, but soon it became a safety issue as it made it easy for people to find them. 
Kim opened up about why they decided to use fake houses instead of their real exterior, saying, quote, My old home in Beverly Hills was really my home, and I would get people showing up at all hours, ringing my gate, and I had to call the police on several occasions. People hopping the gate and scaring me. It was so unsafe. The Hollywood star tours would stop by too because they recognized my home from our show. After that, we realized how unsafe it was to show the exterior of our homes, so now we use different homes for the outside for security purposes. Though they do use different homes as the exterior shots, Kim did confirm that they do actually film inside of their real houses. At number two, original goal. Keeping up with the Kardashians became a mega hit where people just tuned in to watch the drama unfold with the Kar Jenners. I would be lying if I said that this show wasn't secretly my guilty pleasure. It's just so chaotic and I love it. But it turns out that the original purpose for the show wasn't just to simply keep up with the Kardashians. They had ulterior motives. According to Mama Kris Jenner, the original purpose for the show was to bring attention to the Kardashians' clothing stores Dash and Smoosh. Their store Dash became the focal point for their reality show spin-offs like Courtney and Chloe Take Miami and Dash Dolls. During an interview with Variety in 2015, Kim shared how they wanted to use the show to grow their business, saying, quote, When the opportunity for our TV show came about, I wanted to do it to bring attention to our stores. I was thinking this might not last very long, but we'll grow a great business and expand online. I thought it would be great press. I didn't think it would turn into what it turned into. End quote. Their stores ended up closing in 2018, but at that point, they had so many other things going on and the show wasn't even boosting their business anymore. So really, who cares? And finally, at number one, new phones. Even a pandemic can't stop the Kardashians from creating content. The 19th season of the reality show was filmed over the course of the lockdown, and it was all done from the inside of the Kardashians' mansions. How they managed to pull all of this off is a little crazy though. Because camera crews weren't considered to be essential workers during California stay-at-home orders, the Kardashians had to get creative, and so they created a system where every week, someone would bring them a new iPhone to film on. They had proper sets built in Kim and Chloe's homes with lighting in the whole nine yards for their confessionals, but yeah, I still can't get past the iPhone thing. Apparently, a showrunner wearing head-to-toe protective gear would come to the Kardashians' home on Monday morning to bring them a brand new iPhone to start the next cycle of filming. These Kardashians are so crazy. I think it's safe to say that we're all getting catfished by celebrities. Nearly every big name in Hollywood has had something done to their face or bodies, whether that be surgical, cosmetic, or otherwise. Probably one of the best examples of celebrity catfishing has to be the Kardashian-Jenner family because their appearance isn't always what it seems. When you think of Kim K, you might picture her one way, but she might look much different in real life. And when you think of Kylie Jenner, it might be the same case. Kylie has been in the public eye for years, and we've seen her grow and evolve her look over time, but what does the real Kylie look like? Starting off with Kylie's ever-changing hair, let's talk about what is real versus what is fake. We know that Kylie is no stranger to changing up her do. In the past, she's dyed her hair all kinds of different colors, including her famous bright teal ombre that she rocked back in 2014, and she's rocked different lengths as well. Kylie started wearing hair extensions back in 2010, but in recent years, she's mostly been wearing wigs, going from floor-length black hair to bright yellow, shorter length hair in a blink of an eye. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years Kylie released a hair collection called Kylie Wigs or something. She once said that she started wigs, but obviously that isn't exactly true. Because she changes up her look so often, people have a hard time keeping up with what her real hair looks like, so when she shares pictures of what her natural hair looks like, it becomes a big deal. To me, that's kind of funny. Like, imagine your brand is being so fake that when you show your real self, it makes headlines. Can't relate, but carry on. Over the course of the pandemic and the first lockdown, we saw many celebs, including Kylie, showing off their natural selves since there was nothing to get glammed for. And one of the things that was exposed was Kylie's natural hair. Over the time that she's been participating in social distancing, she shared with her followers that she was going on a hair journey, probably to repair the damage that she had done to it over an extended period of time. Her hair at this time is dyed a lighter brown color, bleached from its natural dark brown. Since there's no big gala or event to go to, Kylie has been embracing her natural self, and it's a good thing. It's time to show people that you don't need perfect hair to be beautiful. Moving on, Kylie's skin is one of the things that people have a problem with, and I'm not talking about her skincare line. However, that did get some mixed reviews. Q, Shane Dawson, and Jeffree Star are making fun of it. I don't like that it has a fragrance. I don't think it should, <laughs> but hey, it's just me. <laughs> 
either. Kylie has been receiving a lot of negative attention for the way her skin looks because people accuse her of black fishing and looking fake. Kylie often gets spray tans, making herself look darker, and some have even accused her of darkening her tan in photos as well. There have been side-by-side -side images of Kylie compared to black celebrities, and people point out how similarly their skin looks. Kylie's skin is not naturally that tan, and we recently saw what she looks like without the tans, makeup, or filters when she was photographed by paparazzi during lockdown. In real life, she's much paler and looks like a normal human being rather than the glam model that she poses as on social media. But it's not just the tan that she fakes, but also her complexion. A lot of the time, many celebrities, including Kylie, of course, airbrush their photos and use filters to make their skin look smoother and clearer, but that's not something that every person can relate to. Yes, we all want to look our best, but the makeup and filters aren't real, and there is truth underneath. Kylie has posted photos without filters to show what her skin looks like in real life. And you can see minor blemishes, which is perfectly fine. She's only human after all. Kylie has also posted a few no makeup selfies that shows off something that we rarely get to see in her other highly edited photos, which are her freckles. Kylie hides so much under fake tans and makeup, so seeing the real her is actually pretty refreshing. Now, do you guys remember back in 2015 when the Kylie Jenner lip challenge was a thing? There were so many YouTubers trying it and viral vines of the challenge going wrong. And it even got to the point where doctors were hopping on news shows to warn parents about their kids doing this challenge. So many people wanted lips like Kylie, but unfortunately, if you didn't have the money to pay for fillers, most people turned to vacuuming their lips onto bottle caps or cups. It even prompted the invention of many tools to plump your lips with the same kind of suction. Kylie kept getting lip fillers and kept up with her big lip brand, even creating her lip kit for Kylie Cosmetics around the trend of overlining your lips to make them look bigger. She had fillers until 2018 after the birth of her daughter Stormy, where she announced that she had her lip fillers dissolved. It had been a while since the world saw Kylie's real lips for the way they were before, and we all got used to their new fuller shape, but don't forget that this is what she looked like before all the cosmetic work was done. Her filler lips look didn't last very long since she got them back about three months after having them removed. But why did she get them in the first place? Well, according to Kylie, she wanted to get lip fillers ever since a boy commented on how thin her lips were as a young teen. It became something that she was very self-conscious about and so she corrected this by getting cosmetic procedures done. When she got her fillers taken out in 2018, even if it was for a brief time, she got a lot of praise for embracing her natural self and a lot of her fans commented on how much better she looked. But it's her body and she can do whatever she wants with it. But speaking of bodies, something that a lot of people seemingly like commenting on is other people's bodies. Now, I'm a big believer in body positivity and also body neutrality. Basically, it's my thought that everyone is beautiful no matter what they look like and what size they are, whatever imperfections they believe they have, and really anything makes you unique. But I also believe that your body is there to keep you alive and that you don't need to suffer to achieve a perfect look. All you have to do is take care of yourself and your body and that's all that matters. Many celebrities and their presence on social media kind of go against this as they often post their skinniest or curviest posts and a lot of people, especially young people, look up to this and think that this is what they must strive for. So seeing people like Kim K and Kylie Jenner with their tiny waists and big booties wearing their waist trainers and shapewear isn't exactly realistic for everyone. Just because that's what they look like online and in magazines doesn't mean they really look like that in real life. Though Kylie has never confirmed any plastic surgery other than getting lip fillers, a lot of people believe that she's gotten surgery on her body, enhancing her curves and making her look like her sisters with their signature bodies. Now it could be real or it could be fake, but the bottom line is that you don't know and you don't have to strive to look like these people, especially if their looks are paid for and not grown. Kylie Jenner looks different in real life. This we know for certain. Whether it's her real hair that she hides beneath wigs and extensions, or her skin that she alters through tanning and makeup, or her lips that she alters through filters and cosmetics, or even her body that she shows off using her small little waist trainers and diet techniques. Nothing on social media is ever 100% real, but that's okay to an extent. It's fine if you wanna change things to make yourself feel better, but don't forget to be honest about it. And remind other people that you are not the standard for beauty and that beauty is subjective. Everyone can be an Instagram model if they want to be and nothing has to change. You just have to be confident because that is the most beautiful quality anyone can have. In at number 10, Black China. Black China's 2017 lawsuit against the Kardashian family will finally be taking place after years of stalling. In her $100 million suit, China accused the family of prematurely ending her reality show, Rob and China, and damaging her reputation by claims they made in the media. The planned 10 day trial comes years after the initial filing, and names Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, Kris Jenner, 
Rob Kardashian and Kylie Jenner as being responsible for the demise of the show. China also lists Ryan Seacrest and other producers on the witness list. China claims that Rob and his family wanted to destroy her and her reputation after the breakup. China states that the couple was in the process of filming season 2 of the show, but it was abruptly halted. The Kardashians claim the show ended because Rob and China split, and because China was physically harmful to Rob during their relationship. In at number 9, Kim Kardashian In May of 2021, it was leaked that Kim Kardashian was being sued by her staff for unpaid wages. And the more you learn, the crazier the claims seem. Seven members of her staff are suing Kim for not providing the workers with meal breaks and failing to cover any expenses incurred on the job. The employees claim that when they were hired, they were told they would be considered full-time employees. But after they started working, they were labeled independent contractors and treated as such. This meant the staff were not given any benefits of full-time employment. Kim is also being sued for, quote, failure to pay overtime wages and for unfair and unlawful business practices. Although Kim's reps claim it's not her fault as she hired a third-party vendor to handle the maintenance on her property, and they should be suing this vendor, not her. In at number 8, Kendall Jenner Kendall Jenner has gotten a lot of backlash because of her tequila company, 818, and now some of this backlash has turned into a lawsuit. 818 is being sued by competitor brand Tequila 512 for allegedly ripping off 512's branding. 512 claims in their lawsuit that it's a cheap trick for 818 to copy its shtick by using an area code as its name. 818 is named after the San Fernando Valley, and 512 is Austin. 512 also claims the design and color scheme of the bottles was intentionally made similar to confuse customers. There's even a strange twist in this suit that involves Kim Kardashian. In Kim's mobile app, Kim Kardashian Hollywood, there's an emoji designed for Kendall's 818 tequila brand. But this emoji looks exactly like the 512 brand. Whether the mistake was intentional or not, gives way to the theory that people easily confuse the two brands. And at number 7, Tristan Thompson So we all know that Tristan Thompson cheats on Khloe Kardashian a lot. So much so that when any woman comes forward claiming that she hooked up with Tristan, the media generally believes her. However, when Kimberly Alexander accused Tristan of cheating and fathering her child, he took her to court for libel, claiming that was a lie. In the end, the test results determined that it was a lie, and Tristan was awarded $50,000 in damages. She will also have to pay close to $3,000 in court costs. Costs. Plus, she will be forced to pay 10% interest until the full amount is paid off. Tristan was seeking $100,000 in damages at the start of the trial, claiming the false allegations he fathered her child hurt his reputation and cost him endorsement deals because companies saw him as a brand hazard. The judge halved the damages because Tristan didn't specifically lay out which endorsements he lost due to Alexander's allegations. And at number 6, Kris Jenner In 2020, Kris Jenner was hit with an insane lawsuit that claimed that she was inappropriate with a security guard that was hired to watch over her and her family. Courtney was also involved in this suit, and the bodyguard, Mark McWilliams, claims that both women were inappropriate with him. McWilliams claimed that after being hired in 2017, he became subject to a quote, pattern of unwanted and unwelcome sexual advances and other harassing misconduct from Chris. Also claiming she made suggestive comments towards him about his appearance and asked him private details of his life. He also claimed that Chris massaged his neck, shoulders, arms, and back without his consent, among other physical contact. Chris's lawyer, Marty Singer, tells TMZ, quote, Chris categorically denies ever behaving inappropriately toward Mark McWilliams. The security guard worked outside the house and he never even went into Chris's home. The Kardashian lawyers claim that McWilliams is a disgruntled employee who was fired after being caught sleeping on the job. Halfway at number 5, Kylie Jenner Kylie and her beauty brand were dragged into court after she was sued by Seed Beauty, the company that helped her formulate her Kylie Cosmetics products. The lawsuit came about after Kylie sold a majority stake in her company for $600 million to Cody. Seed Beauty believes that the new Cody deal is opening the door for Cody to steal Seed's formulations for themselves. In the documents obtained by TMZ, Seed says they've been providing their valuable recipe to make up success to Kylie for years now, and with this new deal, their formulation are at risk of being distributed to Cody, their competition. Sources say the lawsuit is a little ridiculous since the Kardashians are most likely not successful because of their products, rather their insane social media presence. In at number 4, Kylie Jenner Another lawsuit involving Kylie Jenner is actually on behalf of her daughter, Stormy Webster. Kylie went forward with the suit after a company called Business Moves Consulting filed to trademark, quote, Stormy Couture a month after Kylie and Travis Scott welcomed their baby, Stormy Webster, seemingly trying to take advantage of her name, which is incredibly unique. Kylie also filed her own trademarks for Stormy, including one for Stormy World. 
but after doing so, she was hit with a lawsuit from the same company, Business Moves, because they claimed that they filed the trademark first for Stormy Couture and people would be confused. Jenner is asking the trademark office to cancel the other company's trademark because it seems like they only got the trademark to capitalize off of her daughter's name. Kylie says Stormy has quote achieved fame in her own right and points out that her Stormy World birthday parties have been covered by major media outlets like Vogue. As of now, it doesn't seem like there's been any updates on the case. In at number 3, Kanye West. Kanye West was caught up in a lawsuit when a former associate of his was sued for forging Ye's signature. West's former friend and good music associate, Malik Yusuf, was sued by company Gentle Monster for claiming that Kanye West would create a promotional video for this company. Yusuf allegedly scammed the company out of $2.5 million. The company says that Yusuf even set up a meeting between Kanye and a rep for the brand, making it seem like Ye was on board for the whole thing. Kanye allegedly had no clue there was any type of business deal in place. Kanye was also not the only celebrity in this scheme. He also claimed Pharrell, Jaden Smith, and others would help out with this project. Apparently, the scam was an elaborate nine month plan that included forged signatures and fake invoices to make the documents seem legit. In at number two, Kim Kardashian. App developer David Liebenson is suing Kim Kardashian for $100 million over her very successful Kimoji app. The developer claims that he and Kim made a joint deal to work on the project together, but she left him high and dry. The plaintiff claims that he and his business partners created an app called Sensor Out that caught the attention of Kim and after she got in touch, they decided to partner on Kimojis. In the legal documents, Kim agreed to give him and his team 60% of the project. But right around when Kim filed for the trademark, she decided to back out of their deal. He's suing Kim for at least $100 million for breach of contract, fraud, and for the profits he believes he's lost out of by being left out of this Kimoji partnership. And finally, number one, Kanye West. Kanye West's clothing company, Yeezy Apparel, was sued by Jordan Outdoor Enterprises after the company believed that Ye ripped off their design. Specifically, the company believes that Kanye copied their camo hoodie, camo thigh high boots, cargo pants, hooded bomber jackets, shirts, and boots. The lawsuit claims that Jordan has distinctive markings on its real tree line and Kanye's companies ripped them off. To make things even shadier, the suit alleges that a rep from Yeezy contacted Jordan about using his camo patterns. But when Jordan said that Yeezy had to license these items, Kanye's reps all of a sudden stopped responding. Then, surprise, surprise, Yeezy comes out with very similar camo patterns. Jordan Outdoor Enterprises is suing for damages, but also wants to stop Yeezy from selling the products in the future and to turn over any unsold inventory. In the same Kanye's camp said, quote, there's nothing original or protectable about the Jordan outdoor gear in question. It's unclear if this lawsuit has been resolved. At number 10, we have Chris's no manipulation and exploitation tactics. Chris managed to land herself a talk show deal in 2013, but her show struggled with ratings, and Chris was soon pulling all types of wild stunts to rack up the viewer count and overall interest of the general public. One of these instances involved Chris making an announcement of, quote, introducing someone very special to her audience. Of course, when she walked in with a baby, everyone had naturally assumed it would be Northwest, who had yet to be revealed to the world at that point. However, the baby ended up being her stylist's newborn. Luckily for her show's future after that stunt, Chris managed to score the first exclusive picture of North, which was revealed on her show alongside guest Kanye West. At number 9, we have Chris's over the top behavior. For starters, she has the keeping up with the Kardashian theme as her doorbell tune. Not only this, but in 2016, Chris officially filed to trademark the term momager. She even apparently owns a personalized bathrobe with the same term across the back. I'd say it's low key weird that she decided to trademark being a manager and a mom since there are many who existed before her and continue to exist after her. Also, don't get me started on the artwork in the foyer of her home that shows her and her family covered by a painting of Snow White eating the poisoned apple. And while we're on the topic of her home, unsurprisingly enough, if you ever decide to pop a visit to Kardashian, you'll be super glad to know that there's a featured table with a pile of hundreds of non-disclosure agreement papers positioned for anyone who enters to sign before they're welcomed in. Nearby there's a frame which quotes the old saying, what we say here, we see here, let it stay here when we leave here. At number 8 we have her obsession with appearances. Tying into the last part of the point before, Chris has done far more to keep up with her and her family's untouchable image. Six weeks before Kim's wedding to Chris Humphreys in 2012, Chris got her neck and face lifted to ensure she looked her best for their big day. Following this, she described the surgery as transcendental and a life changing experience. At number 7 we have her children and 
and how much distance they've put between them and their mother. Robert for one completely removed himself from his entire family as Chris would make constant overbearing comments about his weight and personality. Whether or not she knew this was damaging to Rob over time it was, so that should say a lot about Chris's parenting skills and family dynamics over the years. Even Kendall who seems to be doing really well for herself and avoiding the reality portion of her Kardashian expectations has banned Chris and the rest of her family from almost all of her shows. Kendall did this due to the paparazzi and fans creating buzz over her entire family instead of her at her own events. It's genuinely sad that her mom has spent so many years chasing fame and big bucks that Kendall can't even attend her own shows without the media going into a straight frenzy. Despite most children wanting their parents to be with them while they achieve success, Kendall would rather not. And really, I don't blame her. At number 6, we have probably the weirdest red flag on this list, and that's Chris copying Kim's style. Kim has openly complained non-stop on their show about how annoyed she is over her mom copying her sense of fashion and quote, stealing her spotlight. Of course, Chris seems to be a bit unreasonable in this sense, but hey, I'm not a parent so what would I know? As a daughter myself though, if my mom ever started directly jacking my style, I'd like to think I'd make a big deal out of it too. It's quite tacky and really irritating for parents to try to be cool and act like more of a best friend rather than a parent to their kids. And that shows through the Kardashian children's upbringings. Of course, there's no problem in being a friend to your child, but there has to be boundaries to this and lines that are not crossed. Unfortunately, I don't think Chris understands this because she's constantly stepping into the friend zone and in turn, her mothering pretty much goes out the window. At number 5 we have Kris Jenner's selfish tendencies. She is remarkably such a parent in a sense where everything has to go her way and under her saying, but she seems to go so overboard with this ideology. The driveway looking a certain way to their neighbors, if they were to ever use it for its actual purpose because god forbid anyone did that, is just one instance of many. There's also the fact that not one single being, especially a man, has the ability to divide their family unless it benefits them on the fame scale. And if they do manage to squeegee their way in, they're completely pushed out of the picture to make room for someone who's willing to get the job done. I mean, if this is what we're seeing on screen, can you imagine the absolute self-centered and selfish behavior she exudes when the cameras aren't rolling? Not to mention, she enjoys playing favorites and even once stated that Kim was her favorite daughter of the bunch. I mean, it's obvious why, as Kim is responsible for the entire Kardashian startup, but it's still grossly wrong for a parent to enable this type of mindset. At number 4 we have Chris, who used to constantly ignore the Jenner sisters. As their stepmom, by no means is it her official responsibility to care for them, but at the very least, just acknowledge them. Back when Caitlyn identified as Bruce and Chris was still a Jenner by choice, Chris was displayed on the show to constantly shy away from spending any extra time with Kendall or Kylie, or even simply being in their presence. The trio never looked quite comfortable being alone together, and the Jenner sisters were rarely or reluctantly invited to their family vacations. And this wouldn't necessarily be as bad if their family's loads of boyfriends weren't also being invited to these family vacations, while two of their key players are missing. I'm not sure if it's because Chris didn't consider them to be hers, or if they weren't bringing in enough bank at the time to be important, but it does strike me as odd how much she seems to love and always want them around now that they're both huge household names. At number 3 we have Kim, a grown woman with her own children now, accusing her mother of being a bad parent. This just seems to be the icing on the cake of truth in regards to actually being a bad mom, when your own daughter raising a family is the one airing you out, regardless of whether Kim stated this during a heated argument or not. And speaking of Kim, when she was reluctant to pose her playboy back in 2007, Chris was all for it and told her in short quote, honor the tradition set by Marilyn Monroe and Janet Jackson. Once Hugh Hefner demanded more nudity, Chris was also the one to insist Kim shoot nude aside from the dozen strings of carefully placed pearls on her body despite Kim's hesitance. Luckily, Kim took her revenge by forcing Chris to do a naked shoot of her own, donning a single American flag alongside Caitlyn's gold medal. Unsurprisingly enough, Chris pulled it off and later had the image blown up and framed. At number 2 we have Chris being the ultimate micromanaging control freak. This is literally her entire entire personality wrapped up in a pretty bow. Her nannies have zero room to question her or her daughters and must do everything they say, even if they don't agree with their parenting styles. Photos only happen on Chris's terms, so for the Kardashian-Jenner crew or anyone who works under them, taking photos comes at a huge price. For example, reportedly their nannies cannot take images while on the clock, especially of the kids, as this typically runs for a lot of money for publications. Chris forces her daughters to follow guidelines when they post on social media. They even have a fee schedule confirmed by Chris herself. 
Chris must micromanage at all times and by this, she must run her household exactly how she sees fit. At number one, we have Chris's uncanny ability to bank off her family. She self brands herself as Grandmager amongst her Momager title, so it's no surprise she was elated to learn there would be three new bundles of joy expanding her family. Obviously her emotions were routed in a different kind of happiness though, as she only really sees the monetary value in her current grandchildren. At one point, Kim, Kylie, and Chloe were all set to welcome their children into the bunch around the same time, and all Chris saw were dollar signs amidst the news. She later opened up about the possibilities of releasing a Keeping Up with the Kardashians spinoff centered around her and her six grandkids, Mason, Penelope, Rain, North, Saint, and Dream. If that doesn't tell you this is Chris's biggest red flag, I'm just not sure what will. And at number 10, Kim Kardashian's a uh, tape. This is truly the scandal that started it all, and the Kardashians arguably would not be where they are today without the release of this tape. Right before Keeping Up With The Kardashians was set to air on E!, the intimate tape of Kim and her then boyfriend Ray J was leaked to the public, and went insanely viral. The Kardashians got in a legal battle to try and get it under control, but it didn't work and the tape was eventually sold to a media company and released. Kim said about the tape in a 2012 interview quote, I'm not naive to the fact that that's pretty much how I was introduced to the world. It was a negative way, so I felt like I really had to work 10 times harder to get people to see the real me. I felt humiliated. In the years since its release, it's been long rumored that the Kardashian family leaked the tape themselves to drum up publicity and a storyline for the show. And if that's the case, it totally worked. And at number 9, Kylie Jenner's lips. Kylie Jenner was once considered the ugly duckling of the Jenner sisters, and she was not treated the same way as the rest of her family. Because of her insecurities, she's gotten a lot of procedures and has become unrecognizable from her former self. However, following all these procedures, she is now considered one of the most beautiful women in the world. Kylie's first procedure was lip injections, and it was hard to deny that there was a huge difference in the size of her lips basically overnight. At first, she denied it and claimed it was all lip liner. But the public isn't stupid, and we all knew it was a lie. Then later in 2017, she decided to fess up to the change and admitted she got lip filler because of an insecurity about the size of her lips. Later, she turned all the talk about her lips into a billion dollar business, selling her Kylie lip kits, which was the first of its kind. In at number 8, Kim and Chris Humphrey's 72 day marriage. Kim's lavish wedding was considered the wedding of the century, and there was even a two part special created on E! to celebrate the big day. But since so much content was created out of the relationship, many questioned if the whole thing was just for show. Those accusations got even worse when it was revealed that Kim filed for divorce only 72 days after their lavish wedding. Chris even sued Kim at one point, claiming the relationship was fraudulent just for press. However, Kim clarified on a May 2017 appearance on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen that she knew the marriage was doomed from the beginning. Quote, I just thought, holy shit, I'm 30 years old, I better get this together, I better get married. And at number 7, Lamar Odom cheated on Chloe. This one truly breaks my heart because Chloe and Lamar were one of my favorite couples of all time. But sadly, this was when Chloe's bad luck with men would really start. It was revealed that during their marriage, Lamar cheated on Chloe countless times. They were married from 2009 to 2016, and in that time, Lamar claims he slept with hundreds of women. He claimed later that he had a sex addiction. Chloe shared her thoughts on the news in a 2016 interview with Howard Stern. Chloe said, quote, I was genuinely blown away. Like, when did he fit that in? I don't know. Then, in an interview Lamar did in 2017, he revealed that after he got married to Chloe, women came out of the woodwork to try and be with him. Lamar added, quote, There's one thing I regret when I was married, it was having multiple affairs with different women. That wasn't the stand up thing to do. Lamar later said he would get back with Chloe in a heartbeat. In at number 6, Kendall Jenner's Pepsi ad. Being in a Pepsi ad is a really high honor, and tons of celebrities like Michael Jackson and Cindy Crawford had the honor to be a part of one. So when the opportunity was presented to Kendall Jenner, she jumped at the chance. But it ended up causing the biggest scandal of her entire career. She was a part of a protest themed ad in 2017, because at that time the Black Lives Matter movement was being heavily discussed in the media, and there was a lot of tension between protesters and law enforcement. But of course, using an important social movement to sell a can of soda rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, and Pepsi and Kendall got tons of backlash. Pepsi pulled the commercial and issued an apology, while Jenner told Vogue in March of 2018 that her quote, intention was not to hurt anyone, but it's still a huge stain on her reputation. Halfway number 5, Kendall and Kylie's t-shirts. One of the many business ventures the Kardashians developed was a clothing line for Kendall and Kylie, simply named after themselves. 
the clothing line was pretty successful until the girls released an incredibly insensitive t-shirt showcasing the faces of deceased artists like the notorious B.I.G. and Tupac Shakur. After the release in 2017, Biggie's mother, Valletta Wallace, called the sisters out on Instagram, writing, quote, the disrespect of these girls to not even reach out to me or anyone connected to the estates baffles me. Paris Jackson also commented on how tone deaf the release was. Paris took to Twitter and wrote in part, quote, As a huge fan of Led Zeppelin, The Doors, Floyd, I mean these bands literally helped shape who I am today, I can't condone this fashion. Legends like these who completely changed our world today, not just the music world, should be respected and honored. Not turned into this. A photographer who shot one of the images also filed a lawsuit against the Jenners, but it was dropped in April of 2018, and the sisters pulled the shirts almost immediately. In at number four, Kim's blackface scandal. Cultural appropriation and blackfishing are something the Kardashians are called out for pretty often. The worst backlash on this subject was when Kim released a campaign for KKW Beauty, and fans accused her of blackface. This is because in the photo, her skin color was significantly darker than what we usually see. Kim immediately took down the photos and apologized. She later told the New York Times, quote, I would obviously never want to offend anyone. I used an amazing photographer and a team of people. I was really tan when we shot the images, and it might be that contrast was off. Kim then re-edited the photos to be more natural, and the launch went off without a hitch. In at number three, Tristan Thompson cheats on Chloe. Sadly, cheating is something that Chloe has had to deal with throughout her entire relationship with Tristan. At first, when they got together, everyone was thrilled, and he seemed like a great guy. But then, right before Chloe was set to give birth in 2018, Leaked video showed that Tristan was out cheating on Chloe at a club. At the time, she was nine months pregnant, and sadly, she learned that he was nothing but a cheater who was not ready for commitment. A source close to Thompson told us exclusively, quote, None of his friends are surprised by this, and they all know that he cheats. Then more photos came out showing him taking a girl into his hotel room late at night meaning this was clearly a pattern and not the first time. Chloe decided to stay with Tristan for the sake of her family, but this would not be the last time that he publicly embarrassed her. And at number two, Tristan cheats on Chloe again. The phrase, once a cheater, always a cheater, is most fitting here. Because after getting back with Chloe, Tristan cheated once again. To make matters worse, he cheated with close family friend of the Kardashians, Jordan Woods. After this, Chloe was quick to call it quits. A source said, quote, this time it hurts even more because the person who it was with is someone who knows very much what Chloe has gone through in the past year. A second insider said that Thompson is, quote, just a cheater and doesn't care about anyone besides himself, his wants and his needs in the moment. Jordan went on Red Table Talk after the scandal and confessed they did kiss, but nothing more. Then unfortunately, after some time apart, Tristan and Chloe got back together in August of 2020, but have split again since. And finally, at number one, Kanye's presidential run. This scandal is unfortunate because at first it had nothing to do with the Kardashians, but during one of Kanye's campaign rallies, he spilled some major secrets about his relationship with Kim. The worst was when Kanye exposed that he and Kim almost terminated the pregnancy with their first child, North. A source told Us Weekly that the Skims founder was, quote, deeply upset with Kanye for talking about their personal life and for making matters that are very personal to them and their family public. Then Kanye went off on Twitter, revealing even more secrets and even accusing Kim of cheating with rapper Meek Mill. Six months later, Kim filed for divorce. Apparently, the pair had been living separate lives for many months, and Kim was just done dealing with Kanye's unpredictable behavior. At number 10, we have Larsa Pippen. Everyone knows Larsa and Kim Kardashian as her ex-best friend. But between the constant drama, the star caused a rift between the Kardashian family by speaking on private family matters. When Larsa spilled the tea about dating Tristan Thompson, the Kardashian family was ultimately not happy, mainly because because it made their sister Chloe look like she wasn't as innocent as she seemed. In an interview with Hollywood Raw, Larsa said she was seeing Tristan and had come to LA where she brought him to a party Kim was hosting. While at the party, Larsa introduced him to all the Kardashian Jenner sisters, and then 10 days later, he started seeing Chloe. Unfortunately for Larsa, the Kardashian family didn't believe her claims about Tristan and have since cut her out of their lives for toxic energy and behavior. The Kardashians have since claimed Larsa lied about dating Tristan, but with all that was revealed in her interview, I think it's safe to say she may have been telling the truth. Number 9. Chloe Grace Mortez 
Back in 2016, when Kim was having her own celebrity feud with Taylor Swift, Kim posted her supposed proof that the singer was lying about knowing Kanye's reference to her in his song. As fans went crazy, Chloe was left feeling annoyed. She then took to Twitter to say, Everyone in this industry needs to get their heads out of a hole and look around to realize what's actually happening in the real world. Khloe Kardashian then went to post a series of pictures of Khloe and a back shot with an unknown woman in a similar bikini to Khloe, with the caption, is this the hole you were referring to? Mortez then hit back at the star saying, the first photo was me and neighbors too, and the second is a girl who was wrongfully photographed. Not backing down, Chloe then went to defend herself against those who criticized her for attacking the 19 year old actress by saying, I'm the last person to be a bully, but I have an animal instinct to protect and defend my family. As much as I support the notion to protect your family, bullying and making another woman feel bad about herself is never the answer. If you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Number eight. Taylor Swift. Now, Taylor Swift has had this ongoing feud with the Kardashian family, and Chloe has never been scared to state her opinions on the matter, and when new drama arises, you can definitely see Chloe in the center of it. The feud has been going on since 2016 over Kanye West's track, Famous. Taylor claimed she was blindsided by the lyrics, however, Kim came forward with a voice recorded messages which stated otherwise. Later, Taylor would say that Kim edited and manipulated snippets of the phone calls. When Kim came to say Taylor was lying, it definitely was a shock when Chloe chimed in with her own opinion, proving everything Taylor has been warning us about the sisters for years. Taylor broke the silence by responding to the sisters' words instead of answering those who are asking how I feel about the video footage that leaked, proving I was telling the truth the whole time. The star then went on to say the call was illegally recorded and someone edited and manipulated the recording to frame the star. With Chloe always quickly to chime in on new feuds, the Taylor Swift feud indicates that Chloe just wants to be the center of attention and will insert herself in any family feud that comes comes to light. Number 7, we have Jeffree Star. If anyone knows the tea in Hollywood, it's Jeffree Star. And when Jeffree and Shane Dawson were set to review Kylie's new skincare line, which they hated, Shane mentioned the infamous tweet by Jeffree Star where he dragged Chloe after she was cheated on by Tristan Thompson. Just to recap, when news broke of Kylie's ex-best friend, Jordan Woods hooking up with Tristan Thompson, when the news first broke, Chloe was pregnant with her first child, True. Jeffrey, pretty much being neighbors with the Kardashians, decided to input himself into the center of the drama by saying, Learn to co parent on a healthy level and stop acting like your man isn't trash either. He then went to Snapchat to say Tristan and Jordan had been seeing each other for over a month or two, and it wasn't just the first time. Jeffrey noted that all of Hollywood talks and that he was given this information by hair and nail stylist. Jeffrey's not afraid when it comes to inputting his knowledge on scandals in Hollywood and you can always trust him to back up his information, especially when it comes to the Kardashian sisters. At number 6, we're bringing in Caitlyn Jenner. Chloe and Caitlyn used to have a good relationship, however the pair fell out following Chris and Caitlyn's divorce in 2015. This came just after Caitlyn transitioned in her interview about her marriage to Chris Jenner with Diane Sawyer in Vanity Fair. In the interview, Caitlyn revealed the star wasn't really supportive of her interview or her transition, which was a really heartbreaking time for her. While Chris was left feeling disappointed, Chloe stepped in to say that Caitlyn essentially did her mother dirty, and Caitlyn really had nerve when she said, What happened to family sticking together? Overall, both stars were left feeling heartbroken, as before the interview, the Good American co founder and Olympian were notoriously close prior to Caitlyn's transition, especially since the star was really supportive in the beginning about the transition and told Caitlyn to do whatever makes her happy. But then didn't talk to Caitlyn for the next coming years. Caitlyn continues to have a challenging relationship with her stepdaughters, however, it seems her and Chloe are finally back on good terms. As Chloe stated, she talks to Caitlyn once in a blue moon, but since they're both really busy with their schedules and the pandemic, the stars ultimately have no more beef between each other. Number five, 
Jordan Woods. When news broke about Tristan Thompson cheating on Chloe with her younger sister Kylie Jenner's best friend, the whole world came to a stop, and people were truly shocked. Thompson was spotted at a party, and witnesses at the party claimed the basketball player was making out with Woods. But the series of events followed proved the situation was more complicated than that. After news broke, all Kardashian family unfollowed Jordan, and Kylie even asked her to move out of her guest house that Jordan was living in at the time. The sisters all claimed they helped Jordan to be successful on her own, and she would be nothing without them. And this scandal was an ultimate betrayal for them. Jordan denied the allegations at first, and Chloe can be heard yelling, liar on a snippet that showed on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Jordan went on to Red Table Talk to clear up the rumors, and said when she was leaving the party, Tristan kissed her, and she left. Jordan during this scandal was bullied by the Kardashian clan. On social media, they also got some of Jordan's closest friends to chime in on the situation. While Chloe blaming the star for ruining her family and not sharing the blame with her baby daddy Tristan, Jordan went on to be excommunicated by the Kardashian and Jenner family and both have since moved on to bigger and better things. Number 4. Snooki Snooki appeared on Cocktails with Chloe for an interview. Snooki had a lot to say about her appearance on the show and ultimately said Chloe was being downright mean when they were talking about how they they first met. On the show, Snooki explained that Kim had asked her to come over to her house and Snooki accepted because she was obsessed with Khloe Kardashian. Upon meeting the star, the star looked her up and down and asked why she was there and it made her feel out of place. When Nicole brought this up to the star on the show, Khloe acted like she had no idea what Snooki was talking about and tried to play it off. Snooki then went on to say she left the house and was really upset by the whole ordeal. While fans are quick to chime in saying, and Chloe doesn't look like a mean girl. Many noted that Chloe didn't give us mean girl vibes, but Snooki proved us otherwise. The two have since cleared the air, and Chloe came out with an apology saying she was sorry for her behavior that night and said, Maybe I was jealous you were getting more attention. I have no idea why I did what I did. Number three, Scott Diskett. Who could forget Scott and Chloe's bond? While many thought this bond would be never unbroken, that notion ultimately came to an end recently. Their friendship over the years has definitely had its fair shares of up and downs. With accusations and dramas, this friendship was fizzled out and Scott had a lot to say about it. With Courtney moving on with her new man Travis, Scott knew his ex was happy and that her love was a real thing. However, he didn't want her family to leave him out in the cold like they had been doing. Scott told Chloe that being left out was super hurtful, especially while he doesn't have any other family to go to. However, instead of Chloe being supportive, she was more more worried about Scott seeing PDA exchange between Courtney and Travis. Scott went on to say he would rather be around them than not around his family at all. Since Scott has been pushed out of the family, he has since been focusing on his kids, was spending as much time with them as possible. Hopefully Scott can repair his relationship with the stars and they can work out their differences because seeing Scott struggle to be a part of the family is definitely heartbreaking and no one deserves to feel like that. Number 2. Amber Rose In 2015, Amber Rose's feud to the Kardashian family hit its peak when Khloe Kardashian decided to defend her sisters and family, the star decided to give her input on the rapper Tyga's relationship with Khloe's younger sister Kylie Jenner. Rose went on to say Kylie is a baby and Tyga should be ashamed of himself. He had a beautiful woman and a baby and he left them for a 16 year old girl who just turned 17. Khloe decided to set the record straight and came to defend her sister by saying, don't worry about Kylie or her career, she is 17 and has it together. The star went on to say, please stop talking about my family in interviews, the nine of us don't talk about you. Simply not letting Chloe get the best of her, Rose decided to respond with lengthy tweets, Chloe with the hashtag don't panic, which is a song French Montana wrote. The feud between Rose and the Kardashians stems from her former relationship with Kanye West, and since Rose has never been scared to hit back at the stars with her own input of her own opinions. Number one. Kim Kardashian. Say what you would like about the Kardashians, but it's clear Kris Jenner has done a glorious job, not only with their show's success, but the success of each of her children. The family likes to keep it real, and the feuds have always been the center of the show, especially when it comes down to Courtney, Kim, and Chloe. But who can forget the infamous Purse episode where Kim and Chloe found themselves in a really heated argument. While the Kardashians were rising to stardom, in this one episode, the two stars found themselves 
Giles in an argument after Kim purchased a new Bentley back in 2009. The altercation was captured during the second season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and since has become one of E Series most quotable and viral moments. While the sisters Chloe, Courtney, and Rob were talking about Kim over dinner in Rob's apartment, Kim was outside and heard them discussing her and making fun of her for buying a new Bentley. Kim ultimately came in furious, and the ultimate purse fiasco came to light, and the star could be seen yelling at Chloe not to be rude.